In the far reaches of the north, upon a canvas of cold, star-filled sky, a symphony of color and cosmic radiation plays through the winter night. It is beautiful and terrifying, silent and cacophonous, colorful and Bible black. It is the Northern Lights, mankind's oldest unsolved mystery. If you listen to them very, very carefully, you can hear the millions of voices trapped within. This is Frozen Frights. Aurora Borealis. So, do you know why you're here? Carrie, do you know why you're here? No. Well, we can work on that. You are Karen Smith, go by Carrie? Yes. Formerly of 907th Street. Yeah, uh, formerly? Since the fire. Oh, uh, yes. You live alone? Yes. 907th Street is the house where you grew up? Yes. Inherited it from your mother? Yes. Nice neighborhood? No. Really? It was once. It's been changing ever since. Ever since what? Nothing. There was a point when the town went into decline. When was that? Uh, I, I don't want to talk about that. Fine, we'll come back to it. Do you work? I process insurance claims. You work at home. Married? What? Ever married? Oh, no. You live in the house alone? Yes. You live alone? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hmm? Could I ask a question? Go ahead. Am I in trouble? Of course not. You're free to go whenever you'd like. Where am I? You don't remember coming here. I just need to get my bearings. I understand. Carrie, I'll make you a deal. If you answer a few questions for me, I'll not only let you go, I'll give you a ride home. How's that sound? Home? Yes, how's that sound? I don't have a home anymore, you said. A ride to a hotel, then. How's, how's that sound? Okay. I guess. Let's start then. The fire. What do you remember about the fire? Nothing, really. Take your time. I, uh... Just take your time. I remember being dragged back to the house. Who dragged you? Who dragged you back to the house? I think it was Al. Al? Who's that? My neighbor. He, he was my neighbor. His house was on fire. Al was your neighbor? Yes. And he dragged you to safety? No. Come back here. He was trying to drag me back into the house. Back into the fire. Why was he doing that, Carrie? Get back here now. I... don't know. Yes, you do. You have to remember. I don't know. Carrie, you were trying to escape from Al. Now! Why? Why did you want to get away? I don't know. Yes, you do. I don't want to say it. Why not? It's not real if you don't say it. You were running back from Al's house to your own house. You wanted to get away. You were afraid. You were afraid of Al. I don't know. Yes, you do. Why do you keep saying you don't know when you do? I just want to go home. Why did you want to get away from Al? I just want to go home. Carrie, why did you want to get away from Al? I don't know, okay? I don't know. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Why did you want to get away? He... He was going to murder me. 
How do you know that? Because he's a murderer. He murdered them all. He was dragging you back into the house? Yes. Back into the house. Why do you say it like that? Back into the house. His house. You were in his house, not your own. It's the neighborhood. We're friendly. <sighs> Carrie, do you ever leave your home? Of course. Really? Pizza! Of course I leave my house. Hey, I got medium extra cheese here. I go out all the time. Hey! Do you? Is anybody home? I do. Come on, open up. I don't got all day. I really do. I'm walking away with your pizza. Wait! Thank God. Medium extra cheese comes at $21.95. I left the money there on the table next to the door. What? On the little table next to the door. There's money. Just take it and leave the pizza, please. Why aren't you opening the door? Just take the money and leave the pizza. Fine. Whatever. Hey, there's not enough here. What? There's only a 20. It comes to 21.95. But I had a coupon. 21.95, lady. Come on. Come on, it's only 2 bucks. Fine. Keep the damn pie. We're not delivering to this house anymore, got it? You got a reputation. This address is on a list. Just call Domino's or somebody from now on. Never. No. Why don't you leave the house, Carrie? I don't know. You're agoraphobic, aren't you? No. No, the doctor said... What doctor? That... He said I wasn't. What doctor, Carrie? Mama took me to see him. What doctor? I don't know. I was little. She said I was a terror. I'd throw tantrums if I had to go to school. I thought you said you went to school. I did. I did. It just wasn't easy. Did you have friends in school, Carrie? Not really. Did you do things? Activities? Band. Clarinet. I hated it. You hated the clarinet? No, that part was fine. It's easy to fake in the orchestra, you know. Blow really quiet and do the fingering and the teacher thinks you're playing. I wasn't, though. I couldn't stand it when I played bad. Bad note on clarinet. It's really loud, you know. You didn't want to be there, in school? No. You wanted to be home? Yes. You always wanted to be home? Yes. The neighborhood... Yes? The neighborhood used to be nice. And that's why you wanted to be home? Yes. But the neighborhood isn't nice anymore? Why did you go next door? Why did you go to the neighbor's house? I... Don't know. Let's back up a bit. You don't know why you went to Al's house next door? The murderer's house next door? No. Were you curious about him? No. You weren't? No. Because according to my notes, you were obsessed with him. Carrie? Were you obsessed with him? Carrie? Everyone was. Why? Why was everyone obsessed with your next-door neighbor, Al? Because he was the icebox strangler. Twenty years ago. Six people. People? Women. Victims. Everyone was crazy. My mom was scared she wouldn't let us play outside after dark, even though... Even though what, Gary? Even though... We all knew he was a sex criminal, and we were just kids. Sex criminals attack kids sometimes. The Strangler wasn't like that. He liked old women. The papers all said so. Old, lonely women. Did you read a lot about the Strangler back then? I told, I told you to leave, leave that newspaper alone! Mom didn't like it. Give you nightmares, and then you keep me up all night! She didn't like how interested I was. Are you listening to me? What do you think? I don't know. You don't? Leave that stuff alone! It's not, it's not natural. natural! She was worried about me. Worried? How? Worried I was... changing. You know, changing like most kids do around then. You were only ten. 
I was early. Did you have a crush on the Icebox Strangler, Carrie? No, 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 no. Did you ever dream of him taking you away? Not to murder, you understand, but just taking you away, sweeping you up, carrying you off. I guess... I, I don't know. Kids think strange things, don't they, Carrie? Is that one of my questions? No. It's not. So you were there in the house, Al's house. He's chasing you. How did you get away from him? I don't understand. Well, we know you went to his house, and we know you searched it. At some point, he must have come home and found you, correct? I guess. Is that correct, Carrie? Is everything I just said correct? I don't know. You don't? Well, yes. Yes, that's how it happened? Yes. He found me there. Who are you? He found me in his house. What did he do? What the hell do you think you're doing? He grabbed at me. What are you doing? I couldn't get away at first. Why couldn't you get away? I was in the basement. There was only one way out. Why were you in the basement, Carrie? I was looking. Who are you? What were you looking for? Evidence. What do you mean? He was tried and convicted. He was sent to prison. He even confessed for a lighter sentence. There was no mystery. He killed those women. What were you looking for? Anything. All right. What did you find? Board. What? I found a board. I don't understand. In the basement. I found a board. A piece of wood, like from a lumberyard. Was it evidence? No. But you found it in the basement? Yes. What was so important about the board, Carrie? I could use it as a weapon. Did you use it as a weapon? Yes. Against Al? Yes, it was all I could find. He had me cornered, cornered in the basement, and it was all I could find. What were you doing in the basement, Carrie? Looking for clues. About the murders? Yes. Did you find any? No. The basement was empty. The whole house was empty. No one had lived there since Al went to prison. Right. So it was empty. Like the neighborhood. Yes. All except the board. The board again. Yes. It was weird. How was the board weird, Carrie? It was... new. Not dirty like it should have been. There was red ink on the end. They mark boards like that at the lumber yard. This board, it could have been brand new. You said this board was the only thing in the basement? Yes. Almost like someone had left it there for you to find. What do you mean? You said it was new. Everything in the house was old. How did a new board get into the basement of an old house? I don't know. Carrie? I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't. Carrie, you need to rethink that answer. What? That answer. You need to rethink it. You need to consider. I don't understand. You need to consider what happened in the basement. Why the board, the brand new board, was in the basement of an old house. I don't know what you mean. Carrie, did you bring the board with you? No. Then who put it there? I don't want to hurt you, no, 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 no. Who brought the board? I don't want to hurt you, no, 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 no. Stand back. Don't come any closer. What are you doing here? Why you come into my house? Don't come any closer. You're one of those people, aren't you? One of those damn nosy people want to come around the house. Just stay back. I am staying back. You're the one with the club. Trespasser, that's what you are. You come into my home, sneaking around. Stay back. Don't got no right. Don't got no right to come in here. This ain't your property. Just, just stay back. Wait. Not one more step. I know you. I know you. I mean it. Stay right there. Yeah, I know you. You're that mousy girl from next door. Just... just stay there. You and your mom. You lived next door back in the day. He was always giving me the stink eye, and you... you just look scared all the time. 
Maybe that was me, right? You were scared of me? Maybe it wasn't. Maybe you were scared of everything. Don't move. Scared of everything. Scared of people. Could have been friends, you and I. I like kids. Never had none of my own, so that would have been nice. Playing dad for a neighbor's kid. Teaching you how to swing a hammer, how to tie knots. Girls should learn that stuff, you know. I had a whole garage of power tools. Could have had you building your own furniture. But that's all gone now. Someone took the tools. Everything's gone. Everything but the memories. The memories and the record. You kept a scrapbook on the Icebox Strangler, didn't you, Carrie? I don't confess to nothing. Secret scrapbook because you knew your mother wouldn't approve. But the record's still there. All in black and white. Lies. Your mother didn't take the newspaper, so you snuck scissors into the public library, stole away to dark corners with copies of the Minneapolis papers, and snipped out articles about the Strangler. Then you put the papers back on the rack. Lies. All of it. Caused quite a controversy at the library. A homeless man was barred for a time because they thought he was doing it. Lies. So you didn't kill those women? Not saying I did. Not saying I didn't. Things happen, you know. Things don't go to plan. Sometimes two people get together. You think it's going to be a nice time, and then a stupid broad says something. What happened, Carrie? I hit him. He took a step towards me, so I hit him. I hit him hard, and I ran. I ran, and the house was already burning, so I ran out, and he caught me. And he tried to drag me back into the house. Back into the burning house. That's not true. Weren't your property. Didn't matter. Why? Why didn't it matter, Carrie? Because he'd abandoned it. Because it was empty. No one was going to know. No one was going to care. There was no one left in the neighborhood to care. Matter to me. No one. So, Al came home. What? You were in the house. While you were searching for clues, Al came home. Yes. Had he been to the house before? No. Had he been to the house since he was arrested? No. But it was empty. What? The house. It was empty. Someone had emptied the house, right? I guess so. Who emptied out the house? Back when it happened, I mean, who emptied out the house? I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Things... Things have a way of just disappearing in this neighborhood. I had tools. I had all kinds of things. Did you take anything? What? From the house. Did you take anything from the house when it all happened? No. Why not? It was right next door. I didn't... I... Yes? I didn't want to. One day I came home from school and there was a big lock on the door. The next day I came home and a truck was driving away from the house. After that I could tell it was empty. Did you look in the windows? Trespasser! No, I could just tell. How? How could you tell, Carrie? I could just tell. The house was empty. People would come, look in the windows, but my mother shooed them away. I did the same thing later. What thing? Shoo people away. There were a lot of gawkers early on. Then when the internet started, more people found out about the Strangler. They came and looked. I shooed them away. It was none of their business. Why did you shoo them away? Mother never liked weirdos wandering around the neighborhood. They can get their jollies somewhere else, she used to say. Do you feel that way? They don't come around so much anymore. The weirdos. Why not? The house doesn't stand out so much now. It fits in. Let's go back. Let's go back to the moment you entered the house. Okay. The moment you crossed the threshold. What were you thinking? I don't know. You had to have been thinking something. I I don't know. Carrie, you lived next to that place your entire life. You are obsessed with the Icebox Strangler. 
You have no life beyond him. I work. They've threatened to fire you many times, but they're having a difficult time keeping staff. You are obsessed, and yet you never cross the ten feet of scrub grass and dirt to his door. Not before now. I told you it was locked. The hinges broke years ago. Most of the ground floor windows are broken, too. You could have walked into that house whenever you wished. Why now? I don't know. Carrie, you are a shut-in. You are a person with no life outside the stained and peeling walls of your own house. You have lived next door to the Icebox Strangler for twenty years. He has been safely locked up for seventeen of those years. No one is protecting his house. No one would care if you went inside. But for seventeen years you didn't. Why did you... today? The wasps. What? I said... The wasps. What wasps? There are wasps. Paper wasps in Al's house. All right, what is that? I don't want to talk about this. I think we should. No. Carrie, we have to understand why you went into Al's house after all these years. Why? We have to understand. If these wasps had something to do with that, we have to understand. Why? Because our conversation cannot end until we understand. This interview cannot end until it is concluded, until there is a conclusion. We must reach the conclusion, Carrie. We must. My bedroom is upstairs. I can look out my window right across at the house. It's it's right there. The two houses, they're the same height, so my bedroom is lined up with a room in Al's house across the way. 20 feet in the air, but just 10 feet apart. That room, I think it's a bedroom. It has a broken window. Just inside the window, up on the ceiling, there's a wasp's nest. The wasps can fly in and out the broken window, but they're still protected from the rain. It's really smart, you know? They're really smart. What about the wasps, Carrie? They fly close sometimes. Does it bother you? Only in the summer. It's hot upstairs, and I have to keep my window open. Sometimes they land on the screen. Some of the wasps are really big. It's like a bird landing there. The screen rattles like someone hit it with a stone. Once I was just waking up, and I saw one hanging there, it took off, and for a second I thought it was inside the screen. I screamed, and, and I screamed... I couldn't sleep the rest of the night. Why are you so afraid of wasps? They sting. They sting, and and they sting, and they don't die like a honeybee. They, They can keep on stinging. But they're small. I've always been afraid of them. Why? I've always been afraid of them. Always. Tell me more about the wasps. There's nothing to tell. I think there is. Why did you go into his house? Was it the wasps? Did you want to destroy them? I guess... I don't... I wanted them to leave me alone. Had they ever bothered you before? Just having them there bothers me. So you went into the house to destroy the wasp's nest. You wanted them to go away. I don't... I'm not sure. Cross the threshold with me, Carrie. What? Cross the threshold with me. Go back in your memory. Think about standing at Al's door. Think about when you first entered the house, when you first crossed that threshold. Can you do that? I don't know. I think you can, Carrie. I think you can go back. No, I I can't. Just go back. I can't. You're standing on the porch. No. You've put your hand on the doorknob. Please, no. You're turning the knob and... No! What? What is it? I didn't turn the knob. Go on. I didn't turn the knob because the door was ajar. I didn't turn the knob because the door was already open. I didn't have to turn it. Carrie, was there a light on in the house? Yes. Was Al already inside? Yes. You saw him enter? You saw him come up to the house and go inside? Yes. Carrie, why did you follow Al into his house? 
I don't know. Why did you follow Al into his house? I don't know. Yes, you do. You have to. People don't change, Carrie. People are creatures of habit. They have rules, rules for everything. They have rules for which products to buy, what food to eat, what programs and videos to watch. Some people can break rules. You are not one of those people, Carrie. You don't break. You persevere. You keep going in the same direction like a train. Who are you? I ask the questions here. I just want to know who you are. What is this place? Why are you asking me all these questions? To ascertain the situation. Why? Why is it so important? You really don't know, do you? I, I, I'm not... I don't... Why did you go into Al's house, Carrie? The wasps. They're full of poison. What? Poison. They're full of poison. Go on. You can tolerate a lot of poison, you know. If you take it in small enough doses, you can build up an immunity. That's interesting. Do you have an immunity, Carrie? No. I feel every sting. Why don't you start from the beginning and tell me what happened? Nothing. What? Nothing happened. Nothing has happened for years. He killed it. Who? Al? He was the icebox strangler. Killed it all. He killed six women. He killed more than that. And he didn't pay. So you wanted him to pay? He has to pay. You can't kill and not pay the price. What's the price, Carrie? Death by fire. Eternally burn. You set fire to the house? Yes. You went to the basement with armfuls of wood? Yes. You started the fire. It has to burn. Al, the wasps, everything has to burn. Full of poison. Like a cancer. Right. Right. You get it, like a cancer. You burn out cancer, right? Burn it out of you? That's right, Carrie. You do. That house needed to burn. It would be safe then, wouldn't it? Yes. That's it. That's, that's right. You set the fire. I had to. That's arson, Carrie. I'll confess. I'll go to jail. Do you think you're a hero? No. I'm just doing what anyone would. Saving your hometown from... what? From him. He's dead, Carrie. What? Al. He's dead. He died in prison. Years ago. No, no, no. He was an old man when he committed his crimes. Prison life is hard. Do you think he could have survived? I saw him. No, you didn't. You couldn't have. I know I saw him. Carrie, you set a fire that burned down Al's house and yours and damaged another abandoned place next door. No. The fire department was short-staffed, so they had to focus on your house. It was the only one listed as occupied. No, that's not right. But you weren't home, were you? You were next door in the basement of Al's house. Looking for clues. Right. Looking for clues. The wood you brought was dry. There was no ventilation in the basement. The smoke had nowhere to go. Did you know, Carrie, that most people who die in fires don't burn? It's the smoke that gets them. I didn't know that. Eventually, of course, the rafters in the basement ceiling caught. Then the walls and the floors upstairs. It was dry like kindling. It all came crashing down. I got out. There was no one on the block to call it in. All those abandoned houses. But I got out. It was dumb luck that the fire station was only two blocks away. A firefighter saw the smoke. Al's house was a total loss. Your house was a total loss, despite their best efforts. You don't understand. I got out. They're pouring water on the embers right now. The basement is full of charred wood and ash. I got out. Well, I believe I promised you a ride to a hotel. I, I think I'd like to continue here. 
No, Carrie. You're done here. Hello? Hello, I'm not done. I'd, I'd like to continue my testimony. Please? You have been listening to Vacant, part of the Icebox Radio Theater series, Frozen Frights, Aurora Borealis. Your cast featured Trelawney Irwin as Carrie, Jeffrey Adams as the narrator, and Justin Kapla was Al. Other voices provided by the talented cast. Story, script, and direction by Jeffrey Adams, who also created the sound design. Some sound effects by The Freesound Project at freesound.org. This program copyright 2020 by the Icebox Radio Theater, which is solely responsible for its content. Learn more at iceboxradio.org. Far reaches of the north, upon a canvas of cold, star-filled sky, a symphony of color and cosmic radiation plays through the winter night. It is beautiful and terrifying, silent and cacophonous, colorful and Bible black. It is the Northern Lights, mankind's oldest unsolved mystery. If you listen to them very, very carefully, you can hear the millions of voices trapped within. This is Frozen Frights. Aurora Borealis. Yes. What? Yes, you may have a cup of coffee. How did... how did you... How did you know I wanted a cup of coffee? It's not important. What is important is that we have a little chat about the last 48 hours. Where am I? Your cooperation will be rewarded. Where am I? Someplace safe. You want to be safe, don't you, Jeff? How do you know my name? Well, we know a lot about you. Probably more than you know about yourself. Not difficult. You saying you don't know yourself? I'm saying nobody knows who they really are. Nobody. Oh, I don't know. I have a pretty good grasp on who I am. And I think you have a pretty good grasp on you. Nobody knows who they really are. <clears throat> Shall we begin? Begin what? I, I don't know why I'm here. You're here to provide information. You're here to help us ascertain the situation. Understand? I understand everything but the why. You know why. I've been arrested? Is that it? You've been detained. Why? So we might better understand the situation and better understand you. And to understand what happened to you, we need to understand the last 72 hours. <clears throat> What about the last 72 hours? Let's start with the fire. <laughs> what about it? You are the assistant manager at the Main Street Diner, correct? Yes. And that building burned down 72 hours ago, correct? Yes. So, let's begin there. Tell me about the fire. Jesus, the fire department! I called them. They're on their way. Jeff, th this don't look good. Don't look good at all. I know. Let me just... We gotta get out of here. I know. What are you doing? 
Let me finish these dishes. What? Just a couple more. What the hell's wrong with you? If it spreads to the kitchen, it could ignite the gas main. The whole building could explode. There. Done. Let's go. What the hell's wrong with you? Doing dishes? We have to move, Bernie. The fire's getting worse. You're some piece of work, you know that? Door, Bernie. Now. I've never seen anything. You washed a sink full of dirty dishes in a burning building. Yes. The building was on fire. The suppression system had activated. The fire department was on its way. Yet you took the time to wash a sink full of dishes. Well, not a sink full. It was just a few plates and utensils. Why? Why did you do that? <sighs> As I say, none of us really knows ourselves. Explain. And you worked there for how long? Nine years. I've been assistant manager for six. Uh-huh. Did you see anything suspicious tonight? What do you mean, suspicious? Oh, you know... Stranger who doesn't belong, delivery that wasn't expected, someone lurking around the back of the building. You suspect arson? Well, that statement's premature. No, it's not. The fire's not even out yet, and I'm talking to a cop. Someone must have sent you to talk to me, in the emergency room, like there was a rush. Someone must have suspected arson. Look, any time a business goes up, we consider arson a possibility. Not many people would torch their houses for insurance money, but... Yeah, businesses? The restaurant is doing fine. You do the books? Yes, and the restaurant is doing fine. Lori would never do that. And certainly not on a Friday night when we were completely booked. Lori, that's, uh... Lori Sobel, the owner. I've worked with her for years. Huh. So, you don't think it was arson? I didn't say that. I said Lori wouldn't have torched the place. It was a full house. Uh-huh. Do you know where the fire started? No. Do you know what caused the fire? No. Well, it's interesting. I was talking to a, um, Bernie Rodriguez. You work with him, right? He works in the kitchen. Well, he said after the fire was already out of control, you stopped to wash a sink full of dishes before exiting the building? Yeah. Why'd you do that? I don't know. Oh, excuse me. Hello, Dr. Phelps. Jeff, you look a little singed. I'm all right. Since when do you work the emergency room? They were shorthanded tonight. Would you excuse us, officer? Well, actually, I had a few more questions. Uh, I know, but I'm seeing some signs here that have me a little concerned. Could you interview someone else for a few minutes? You can have him back, I promise. All right, Doc. Whatever you say. Thank you. Jeff. Yes? They suspected arson. That's what I understand. Yes. Jeff? No. Of course not. Are you sure? Am I sure I did not set fire to the building? Yes, I am sure. I think I would have remembered doing that. All right, I'm sorry. But I think you need to be very forthright with the police. You mean like you were just now? Pretending to be an emergency room doctor when you're really a psychologist? I never claimed to be an emergency room doctor. That cop just assumed. Why did you come down here, anyway? One of the nurses called. She said you'd been brought in for smoke inhalation and were being questioned by the police. And that was enough to get you out of your bed at night? Well, some of the things we talk about in our sessions would interest the police. I thought our sessions were confidential. They are, they are. I won't tell them anything. Don't worry about that. It's just... I'm concerned you would say something without really understanding the impact it might have. Like what? Like how much you hate everyone at the restaurant. I don't hate them. I just don't think about them much. They're unimportant. They're human beings. Does that automatically make them important? You see, that's what I'm talking about. In a tragedy like this, coming off as cold and unfeeling can be dangerous. 
the police could look at you as a potential suspect. I'm sure they already do. Well then, we need to do everything we can to- Dr. Phelps, I appreciate you coming down here, but everything is under control. I did not set this fire. I did not try to murder all those people. I am guilty of nothing. So it wasn't one of your traps. This wasn't a fantasy of yours. Trapping people in a building, then setting it on fire? Like we talk about in our sessions? Like we talk about in our sessions. No. I wouldn't have been inside the building with them when the fire started. Well, we can talk about that more next Tuesday. In the meantime, have you given any more thought to that clinical trial no I mentioned? No medications. They make me fuzzy. But this new one is supposed to mitigate the side effects- They all claim to do that. None of them do. Besides, I like the way my brain works. I can focus when other people can't. Did you hear about me washing dishes? I did, yes. Everyone else in the place was running around like chickens with their heads cut off. But I'm calmly sticking to my duties. You don't think that was a little odd? Washing dishes in a burning building? Don't you start. But this is what we're talking about. We've diagnosed you, but you refuse treatment. What I've refused is drugs. I come to our sessions. That's considered treatment, isn't it? Not if you don't take any of my suggestions. I won't go on drugs. Not now. Not when I'm close. Close to what? Maybe I'm not ready to trust doctor-patient confidentiality quite that much. You worry me, Jeff. I'm fine. You worry me, and I understand your situation better than you think I do. I understand it very, very well. So you keep saying. Next Tuesday, then? 3.30? Yes. Candy. Candace. Could you, could you just ease up a little bit? I almost lost you. Just loosen your grip, please. I, I can barely breathe. But I almost lost you. You did not almost lose me. There was a fire. I got out in plenty of time. It was fine. I almost lost you. <laughs> there, there. It's all right. How can you be like this? Be like what? So calm. How can you be so calm? There was a fire. Jeff, I almost lost you. Fires happen sometimes, and uh, as I've said repeatedly, you did not almost lose me. So could you please just start the car and take me home? Damn it. What is it? I just... Never mind. Wait. Hold on. What's wrong? Nothing. Candy. Nothing is wrong. Nothing is ever wrong. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. I'll just take you home. The doctors were concerned that you couldn't drive yourself because of smoke inhalation, so I'll just pretend to be your damn Uber and drive you home. I'm sorry. For what? You're upset, and I don't know why. And for that, I'm sorry. Let's just go home. Candy, No, it... let's just go home. It's stupid, and I, I don't want to talk about it, so let's just go home. Fine. You haven't started the car. You really don't understand, do you? Of course you don't understand. It's stupid. I would like to understand. I... I thought... Yes? I thought this would be the time when things were different with you. Different than what? Different than you. The way you always are, so calm, so collected, so... cold. I'm not cold toward you, am I? Sometimes. Then I'm sorry. I'll try harder. No. No? No, trying harder won't make a difference. It's not... It's who you are. It's who you've always been. You're not normal, Jeff. Do you understand? People who've been through a traumatic experience do not 
just shrug it off like this. All people are different. But you aren't normal. Nothing phases you. Nothing matters to you one way or another. I, I used to think you were repressing all this emotion, that you had to let it out at some point or you were going to explode. But now, when I heard what happened at the restaurant and you called me, I was sure I was going to show up in here and see for the first time something human in your eyes, something besides that glassy-eyed stare. But it was just the same. Almost burning to death did nothing to change you. Nothing. I don't... I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say. Look, it's been fun and everything, but I think both of us just want something different from a relationship. I think it would be better if we were just friends. What? I think I left a sweater at your apartment. Uh, when we get there, can I come up and get it? I, uh, um... I, I think it was red. I'm not sure it's there, but I can't find it anywhere else, and... Dr. Phelps said there are drugs. What? I... I've been seeing a counselor for a year. You have? He's diagnosed me. I did a long time ago. You're right. I'm not normal. I... I don't understand emotions and feelings very well. It's like a foreign language. I can pick up a word or two, so to speak, but most of the time... Why I... didn't you tell me you were seeing a counselor? It's embarrassing. Oh, Jeff. I really want us to work, what we have. I'm sorry. Did I do wrong? No, 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 it's fine. I, I didn't know. I'm sorry. That's all right. I, d I didn't know. I, I didn't know you were trying to get better. I am. I really am. I'll try harder to understand. I'll communicate more. I promise. That's all I really want. I'll try really hard. I love you so much. I love you, too. Now, um, what about these drugs? What? The drugs. You said there were drugs? Is this a clinical trial or something that's more long-term? What did they do? Help you overcome your inhibitions? So, tell me. I don't know anything about them. Except, I think it's a clinical trial. But they'll help you, right? Help you to feel like a normal person. Yes. Oh, sweetie, I'm so happy. Let's go home. Yes. Scratch the itch. I'm s sorry, what? Scratch the itch. I was saying I understand what it's like to have an itch you can't scratch. Oh. Are you all right? You were spacing out there for a minute. I I'm fine. I was just lost in thought about what you were saying. Oh. And what was it I was saying? I apologize. I... I don't know. <laughs> it's okay, Jeff. We all space out sometimes. I was just commenting that it helps to meet casually like this. It was a good idea. I'm sorry for taking you away from your office. No, don't be. The more time I can spend away from there, the better. And if you're more comfortable in a coffee shop than on an office couch, so be it. So you still consider this a session? An informal one, but yes. You're not taking notes. Should I be? You just usually take notes in a session. Well, you picked my favorite coffee spot, and I happen to know that French roast here keeps me alert enough to remember everything that's said. Thanks, Heather. But we're still in a session. We don't need to be if that bothers you. No. It's what I prefer. Doctor, patient, confidentiality. So you're ready to talk about it? Talk about what? Your itch. The one you can't scratch for some reason. This is confidential, Jeff. You can talk to me. Sometimes, I have thoughts. We've talked about this. Thoughts about 
people. How stupid they all are. We've talked about that, too. You know, they used to say I was stupid. In school, I mean. But I wasn't. I was just bored. The subjects that interested me, like chemistry and biology, were fine. But English? History? Jim? What was the point? Right? Right. If I'd gotten to someone like you earlier, I I probably would have been diagnosed with some kind of learning disability, uh, like autism or Asperger's syndrome. Well, those aren't, strictly speaking, learning disabilities, but I take your meaning. Focus. What? That's what it's about, really. My ability to focus on one thing. People are intimidated by it. That was always the problem. I'd skip other classes to do a chemistry lab over and over until I got it perfect. I got in huge trouble one time for dissecting 17 fetal pigs. Cost the school 200 bucks. 17? One right after the other. Janitor found me at 5 in the morning. So, focus. Yeah. In a way, it's kind of like a superpower, isn't it? People don't understand. They think life is about balance. I don't think it is. I think life is about pruning back what you don't need. The tree grows stronger when you prune back the dead wood. You know, Jeff, this is all very interesting, but I have the sneaking suspicion it's not what you want to talk about. It is, in a general sense. But not in a specific sense. No. What is it you want to talk about specifically, Jeff? Specifically? Yes. What's the thing that has you concerned about doctor-patient confidentiality? We've talked before about my traps. The ones you used to draw when you were a kid? And build. And build. I caught a squirrel once. (laughs) That was a good trap. What about the traps, Jeff? What if I told you I think about trapping people sometimes? Go on. There's so much chaos in the world. So many people walking around, out of control. And you feel the need to control those people, Jeff? Sometimes. Sometimes I just want to put a stop to things. How? How would you control these people? I have some ideas. With fire? Maybe. You realize doctor-patient confidentiality only goes so far, right? If I suspect a patient is a danger to himself or others, I have an obligation to report that. Sure. But do you suspect it? Suspect what? That I might use fire. I haven't decided yet. (laughs) You know, sometimes I think you and I are not that different. Oh? No. You want to control people, don't you? Isn't that what doctors want? I want to help people. In my line, wanting to control people would lead to lots of trouble. You know what we said day one, right? No one can get better unless they decide to. Right in one. If I had a need to control people, the last thing I would be is a psychologist. Hmm. Point taken. But you do want to see them controlled, right? In control of themselves. In control of themselves, of course. But it amounts to the same thing. You know what's different about you in this session? You've been smiling now for the last five minutes. I don't smile in your office. You never smile. Anywhere, I've never seen you. Well, maybe I'm having a good day. That's good. You want to tell me why you're having a good day? I've made a decision. What about? About you. Me? Yeah. I'm going to confide in you, Dr. Phelps. That's good. I think about more than trapping people. More than controlling them. I think about ending them. Go on. It's a form of control, I guess. The ultimate form. Erasing a person like a black mark on a white wall. Seeing them just disappear. It's almost intoxicating, the thought of it. I see. The thought, not the action. Everyone has a right to exist. Jeff, I think it's important at this point for you to confront these feelings directly. What does that mean? I think you should name what it is you're talking about. Fine. I'm talking about murder. You don't seem terribly bothered by naming this. 
I've been told my moral compass is different than most people's. Okay, so what about murder? What do you mean? What do you think about murder? What's your opinion of it? In a general sense? It's wrong, obviously. What about in a specific sense? Depends on the person. Some people just deserve it. What would cause a person to deserve being murdered? Waste, I suppose. A waste of space. Taking advantage of other people's kindness, criminals, con artists, liars. That's a pretty big group. That's why I'd never actually murder anyone. There's too many of them. You could run a scythe through this world and not even have an impact. But you do think about it. Yes. Does it excite you sexually to think about killing people? That's disgusting. There's no judgment here, Jeff. No, it does not excite me. Are you sure? Why are you pursuing this? Well, to be frank, because of what facilitated this session. What do you mean? When you called me, you said you'd wanted to talk about your girlfriend, Candace. Oh. Is that not right? No. No, no, it is. I just forgot. Ah. Anyway, I'd assumed when you started talking about what we're talking about, there was a sexual component. Why would you assume that? It's not unusual, you know. People with homicidal tendencies finding sexual pleasure from thoughts of killing. That's not what I wanted to talk to you about. But it is about Candace. Indirectly. I told her what you said about there being therapies for my condition. I see. She was very happy about the idea. Overjoyed, actually. You're ready to maybe give them a try. Kill him. Is something wrong? Did, did you hear that? Hear what? N nothing. What, what were we talking about? The drug therapies. Are you ready to give them a try? I, I, I think I am. Yes. Kill him now. It might take a while, you know. We'll need to try different medications, different doses. There may be several go rounds before we get things right. Kill him. I, I, I think I can do that. Good. This is a monumental step, Jeff. I'm very proud of you. He should die for that. Th th thank you. What was that? What, what the hell was that? What, what? Yeah. Yeah. Psychiatric journal. I'm being compelled to keep these journals by Dr. Phelps. But I do this under protest. I think... Pointless navel-gazing never did anything to losing what little respect I had for him. Phelps is a quack. Clearly a quack. I can only hope he's not doing harm, as I still think I am perfectly fine. It's everyone else that's the problem. Everyone else has always been the problem. Except you're hearing voices now, aren't you? To whom it may concern. I am writing this as a means of clearing my head, and I want it on the record that in no way does this journal suggest I believe in Dr. Phelps' methods, or that of the psychiatric community. Journaling does no good, but I find myself at an impasse, and with no other options before me, I've turned to writing this down as a means of finding a course of action. I won't write down what has come before, because that is boring to me. Suffice to say, I am not normal. Superior? Perhaps. But definitely not normal. I live in a state of agitation. 
I managed to function in an adjacent state to normalcy, but never quite completely normal. I have a job, or did. I am in a relationship, though I feel the status of that to be tenuous. And I function at a very high level. I'm not insane. But recently, I have begun to hear voices. The voice was quiet, childlike, and spoken monosyllables. What it said is unimportant. I think it represents an impulse of mine, a, a subconscious thought that has no more validity than a wild fantasy or a fever dream. And yet, Kill him. and yet I can't deny there is a certain appeal. I suppose it's just an immature impulse, a childish idea. I should not follow through on it, of course. But there are aspects of this that are worth considering. Kill him. Perhaps it would help if I did just once. Follow the impulse and listen to the voice. Scratching an itch, Phelps called it. I cannot imagine doing it, of course. Killing someone. Kill him! But I, I have no doubt I could do it and get away with it. If that cop who interviewed me after the fire is any indication of police brain power, I could get away with it easily. Very easily. This should take some thought. I should not enter into this decision lightly. I don't see the point in killing a stranger. But someone close. Someone with a reason. An act with a purpose behind it. Kill him. Maybe even someone whose death is advantageous. That's something to think about. Yes. You know who? Yes. Something to think about. This is the place. Well, it certainly is rustic. You don't like the cabin life? No, no, I like it fine. One of the reasons I moved my practice to the north is that I could be closer to my shack. You have one? Just off of Route 16, yes. Not quite as rustic as this, though. This shack has been in my family for generations. Change comes slow. It was a major chore getting Grandpa to add electricity. Well, it's a fine example of the Northwoods hunting shack. Uh-huh. Oh, sit down. Uh, uh, where are my manners? I'll put some coffee on. All right. Probably can't provide as good a brew as your favorite spot in town, but it will be fresh. Is that why you invited me up here? Is uh, what why? Coffee. Is that why you invited me up here? Oh, well, you know. No, I don't. I thought we could talk here. You mean like a session? No, no, just like two people talking. Uh-huh. Uh, this will need to steep for a few minutes. Uh, here. You get the Guest of Honor mug. We call it that because it's the only mug in the shack without a crack in it. <laughs> well, I feel suitably honored. So. So? What did you want to talk about? Oh. I don't know. Whatever comes up. You'll have to forgive me if I can't lower my clinical eye. But there's something different about you today. Different? I can't quite put my finger on it, but yeah. Different. More decisive. Almost as if I've made a decision about something. Almost. I hope you don't take cream or sugar or anything. At the shack? I wouldn't dream of it. So, you want to talk about your decision? I guess. All right. Tell me about it. Oh, where's the fun in that, Dr. Phelps? Don't you want to question it out of me? Prod the knots in my brain until you find the right string to pull? And what happens when I pull the right string? It all comes undone, of course. 
weeping confessions and gratitude for the noble doctor. A, probably a paper in all the right journals. Maybe a self-help book and a promotional tour. Flirting with morning show hosts all over the country. Mm, it sounds like you have my next two years planned out for me. <laughs> no, nothing like that. I know you won't write the book. Why do you say that? It could be an interesting read. You're not going to write the book, Dr. Phelps. Because you're going to be dead in a few minutes. Hmm. I see. What did you do? Poison the coffee? No, I made sure my grandfather's deer rifle was right here by the counter where it always is. I came up earlier, made sure it was loaded, even plunked a couple of cans out back. I was a little out of practice. Jeff, I don't think you're thinking clearly. No, I'm thinking very clearly. I don't think unclearly. That's my cross to bear. Singularity of thought. Focus. I'm focused. More focused than you or anyone else could possibly understand. Blood on your hands. Soon. More than... Uh, more than you could understand. You have brought me up here to murder me. Yes. Is that not clear? No, it just seems unlike you. I always thought you were better than this. What, what, what do you mean? Well, you're obviously intelligent, and you've obviously planned this out to a very exacting degree, and yet... He's tricking you. You didn't take into account my schedule. I have other appointments. I have plans this evening. Plans I made with someone. I'll be missed. No, no, I... I thought of that. Did you tell anyone you were coming up here? Yes. You're lying. I picked you up at a coffee shop, and, and you're lying about other appointments, too. You wouldn't have come up here with me if you had other appointments. You had no idea how long the trip was. You're, you're probably lying about the plans in the evening, too. You seem nervous, Jeff. Is everything okay? I'm not nervous. Uh, there's nothing to be nervous about. I'm uncommonly focused. Always have been. I... It, we, we, I uh, Are you all right, Jeff? I'm... I, I, I'm fine. I'm fine. They're loud, aren't they? The voices in your head? What? What? I have an idea. Why don't you do the dishes? What? The dishes. Why don't you wash the dishes? They're, they're clean. They could always be cleaner. There. That's better. Now I imagine you're hearing voices, correct? What's going on? The voices. The voices you're clearly hearing now for the first time. They're awfully, awfully loud. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the fact that the uncommon focus you're so perversely proud of is starting to break down. The things you used to ignore so you could focus on one thing are starting to intrude, yes? Uh, I... Your mind is losing its simplistic grip on reality. You're having trouble focusing on a single thing. It's because there's a kind of din in your head, like static, white noise, right? Stop washing the dishes. I caused you to have this, Jeff. What? I told you. I am closer to understanding your impulses than you might think. I'm very much like you, actually. Remember when you told me how you couldn't do well in school, only focusing on subjects that interested you? That was my story as well. Only my subject was... chemistry. What did you do to me? Put something in your coffee every time we've met over the previous two weeks. Dosed you with various compounds, experiments. You were a particular puzzle, Jeff. A tough nut to crack. But from the look in your eyes right now, I'm going to say we've had a breakthrough today. You poisoned me? Of course not. I'm helping you, Jeff. You lack empathy, the ability to make connections with other people. It's because you can't hear them, Jeff. Can you hear them now? Their voices. I can hear them. I hear them all the time. Y you can't do it. I'll turn you in. You could have. Except you're a little distracted right now. What do you mean? 
You didn't even notice when I reached over and took your gun, Jeff. I've had it for five minutes. I... I... Where's your celebrated focus now? No. All right. Now let's begin our clinical trial. Describe for me how you're feeling. No! <sighs> oh well. It is a good day for some hunting. You ran into the woods? Yes. Where were you going? I don't know. What were you going to do? I don't... I don't know that either. Were there... voices? So many voices. Hmm. Well, I think we can help. You can? Yes, Jeff, I think we can. Ultimately, that's why we're here, to help. Provided we can ascertain the situation. Who are you, anyway? That's unimportant. The important thing is, as far as you're concerned, none of this exists. What do you mean? This room, this table, that cup of coffee. None of it actually exists. It does, of course, but it's important for you to think it doesn't. I, I don't understand. I'm imagining this? We'll settle on that, yes. I don't... What? Time to run, Jeff. What? Time to run. Now. What? What? You stopped running, Jeff. That's most unsporting of you. I don't understand what's happening. None of us do. None of us ever have. Now run. You have been listening to Clinical Trial, part of the Icebox Radio Theater series Frozen Frights, Aurora Borealis. Your cast this evening featured Cody Boyer as Jeff, Justin Kapla as Bernie and the Cop, Caleb Silvers was Dr. Phelps, and Trelawney Irwin played Candace. Story, script, and direction by Jeffrey Adams, who also created the sound design. The Foley artists were Jeffrey Adams and Evie Konat. Some sound effects provided by The Free Sound Project, available at freesound.org. This program copyright 2020 by the Icebox Radio Theater, which is solely responsible for its content. Learn more at iceboxradio.org. G. In the far reaches of the north, upon a canvas of cold, star-filled sky, a symphony of color and cosmic radiation plays through the winter night. It is beautiful and terrifying, silent and cacophonous, colorful and Bible black. It is the Northern Lights, mankind's oldest unsolved mystery. If you listen to them very, very carefully, you can hear the millions of voices trapped within. This is Frozen Frights. Aurora Borealis. No, I don't think you do. Why you gotta bring me down all the time? You do it to me. Not as much. Uh Uh-huh. Nuh-uh. You're gonna get us in trouble. We always got out before. Hey, what is this place? You are Daryl Anderson? Answer my question. Answer mine. What? She asked your name, Phoebe. Shut up. You shut up. This is going to go a lot smoother if you simply cooperate and answer my question. You first. What is this place? It's a facility. What kind of facility? Investigative. We must ascertain the situation. 
Now, could you please verify your name? Yes, his name is Daryl Anderson. Peggy! And my name is Peggy Stanley. Glad we got that oh-so-important part out of the way. Except it isn't. What? Your name is not Peggy Stanley. You've gone by several aliases, but never Peggy Stanley. (laughs) Busted. Okay, fine. You want to know my real name? Not really. What? I want to focus on what's important. I want to ascertain the situation. What happened at the roadhouse? Um, Don't say anything. Yeah, don't don't we get a phone call? Don't say anything. What happened at the roadhouse? Patrick Swayze beat up a bunch of dudes? The roadhouse, please. Don't you have to give us a phone call? The roadhouse? The what? Hey there, what's your name? Candy, because I'm sweet. What's yours? The Roadhouse. The name of a bar in Minneapolis you two like to frequent during visits to the cities. It's a somewhat ironic name because it's actually very bland and located inside the Mall of America. Not exactly keeping with its rough-hewn image. So, are you sweet, Candy? I don't know. Maybe you should have a taste and find out. (laughs) Ooh, you work fast. Live fast, die young. Leave a good-looking corpse. James Dean. Who? James Dean? Old movie actor. He liked that line. Funny, he never actually said it in the movie. Is this how you usually pick up girls? Wow them with antique movie trivia? Who's picking up girls? You are. (laughs) I think you've got it backwards. Seems like I'm the one getting picked up. Oh, really? Yes, really. Candy. (laughs) More of a tourist version of a roadhouse. So, is there a question in there somewhere? Yes. What happened at the roadhouse? I want my phone call. You're free to call anyone you like. Your mobile is still in your pocket. That's crazy, it is. Who are you calling? Pete. Shouldn't you... um... Who do you think he should call? It's not important. The hell? What? What did you do to my phone? Nothing. It says I've got service, but I've got some kind of weird interference. Well, while you're waiting for it to clear, let's talk about what happened at the roadhouse. Don't know. Wasn't there. But you were at the roadside inn next door. Never heard of it. I think you have. I think you and Peggy plan to use that establishment to attack a man named Doug Williamson, whom Peggy picked up at the roadhouse and lured to the roadside inn next door. Lured? With the promise of sex, yes. (laughs) Never promised him anything. So you remember him? That's a good start. Peggy, don't say anything. (laughs) I know my rights. I don't have to say anything. (sighs) You're bad. Under normal circumstances, that would be true. (laughs) (laughs) However, you should be aware that your cooperation will be very advantageous for you. And for you? That goes without saying. Now, tell me what happened. Hey there. What? Who are you? Nobody, man, nobody. He's just a friend. You know him. Wait. Be cool, just be cool. You, you're going to rob me, aren't you? She lures me in, and then you... Please, please say you're just going to rob me. You're perfectly fine. Oh, thank God. I thought... Ow! Sorry. Is that a syringe? Precaution. You're kind of a big boy, so we can't take any chances. What? What was in that? What did you do to me? Think of it as a sweetener. Catch him, Daryl. Right. What? Yeah, he's out. Good hunting, babe. Thank you. He'll be full of juice. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Help me. So... Do you want to go first? No! Ah! No! No! Ah! Ah! Ooh, what about this neckline? Mm, I don't know. Too much? Not for you, maybe. I can wear that without stuffing tube socks up my bra. A lot of tube socks. <laughs> you're just diminutive. Oh, you're sweet. But you're also a D-cup. Pete likes D-cups. 
Pete loves you. Not like Daryl loves you. What do you mean? Excuse me, are you open? Sorry, go to checkout five. But there's a huge line at checkout five. I'm on my union break. Well, oh, fine. You are terrible. What? There isn't much of a line at Barb's Till. You're going to get fired one of these days. Sheila, I have been working at the store since high school. I know where all the bodies are buried. I'm entitled. What about this neckline? I hate chokers. And you're not entitled. You're just... What? I'm just what? I'm telling you. Ah, it can't be right. Why not? Well, it's not natural. What do you mean? It's totally natural. Most natural thing in the world. You could get really sick, you know. Haven't yet. Well, you could get into trouble then. For what? Ain't no regs against it. Well, because who the hell would write... Who would write regs against drinking blood? That's my point. Nobody would. There's nothing wrong with it. They wouldn't write regs because it's basic common sense, right? And if management catches you stealing cow's blood... You're again, avoiding the issue. Try it with me. Oh, Jesus. Stomach turns just thinking about it. You're a hypocrite. What? Hypocrite? We work in the meat department, Pete. We butcher animals for people to eat. Your point? Look at all the crap we throw away. You know, the Indians used to use the entire buffalo. So you said every day we've worked together. So? Blood is part of the animal. Then make blood sausage. How's that any different from drinking it? Oh, God, you say that one more time, I'm going to toss my cookies. You don't know what you're missing. You really don't. No, I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah, it's not about the blood, you know. Daryl. It's about what the blood does for you. Okay, what do you mean? Well, in the right place, with the right partner. Partner? What the hell are you talking about? You know. You mean screwing? You know, forget I ever brought it up because you have no romance in your soul. No, I just, I, I was wondering is all, if that was what you were talking about, and specifically if you're talking about, what, what are you talking about, picking up girls? Only one girl for me, ever. You can't act that way. Act what way? Like you own the store. It's going to come back to bite you someday. It hasn't so far. You're just so frustrating sometimes. Why? Forget it. No. Really, why, Sheila? Forget it. You wouldn't understand. Well, let me try, at least. I mean, unless, of course, the deep thoughts of Sheila Henderson are just too complex for dumb old me. Look, I tried to explain it to you back in high school, and you just didn't get it then. Yeah, well, we're 30 now, so I think I've matured. Have you? What? Have you matured? You've barely even changed. You still look like you did then, you still act like you did then, and you still get away with everything, just like you did then! Hey, hey, what's wrong? <sighs> Darn it. You've made me all upset. About stuff from high school? I don't think so. What's really wrong, Sheila? It's Pete. You guys hitting a rough patch? I guess. I caught him again the other day looking at that stuff on the internet. Oh, sweetie. If you're going to worry about that with a man his age... I know. I know. You know what I say. You always say I should turn it to my advantage. Because you should. He felt guilty, right? When you caught him? Of course. Then use it. Look, you were telling me about that little B&B &B on Lake Superior, right? Nice place for a romantic getaway. You two could reconnect. We couldn't afford that place. You could if he sold his flat screen. What? Like he needs a 72-inch screen to play video games. Look, it's simple. You feel like crap, right? Thank you very much. He was looking at pictures of other women, which makes you, his wife, feel like crap. So let him know how you feel. Let him know how he made you feel. He'll feel bad. Then he'll ask how he can make it up to you. Then you'll tell him. B&B &B weekend. Well, maybe I don't want to be stuck with him in a bedroom all weekend. What will we do? Oh. Tube steaks off the menu, huh? Ugh, you're disgusting. Well, you know, Daryl and I have been experimenting. You mean drugs? No, not drugs. We've been experimenting with something more natural. She does? 
Yeah, she does. No way. Way. Little Peggy Wilkes drinks, you know. You can say it. Blood. And it's not Wilkes anymore. I married her, remember? You were there. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's just, I can't get my head around this. Well, I can get my head around it. And so can she. Oh, you're such an idiot. Don't knock it till you try it. it. Might be just what you need to, you know, jumpstart things with Sheila. Take it from me. Oh, I don't know. It's It's been ten years. I suppose we should be happy we had as long as we did. How do you guys do it? Do what? Well, you and Peggy, me and Sheila, we all went to high school together. We're the same age. How do you, you know? No, I don't know. What are you talking about? Look, Sheila and I, we look like our parents. You and Peg, you look like you just walked out of Mr. Smith's algebra class. And you're asking me how we do it? Yeah. Pete, what is it that you and I were just talking about? You know what you should do? You know what you should do? You, you should, should come, come over, over to, to our, our house, house tonight. tonight. We, we could talk, talk about this. this. I don't know. Maybe, uh, I'd have to ask Sheila. We, we can, can talk, talk about things. things. We, we can, can help, help you guys. guys. That's real nice. I'll, I'll ask. Maybe. I don't know what Pete has going on. Probably, though. Yeah, probably. So, so seven? seven? Sure. sure. So you invited your friends over for dinner? How much longer is this going to take? Quite a long time, if you don't answer my questions. Fine. Yes, we invited them over. For the purpose of attacking them? Don't answer that. I'm not stupid, Daryl. No, we were not going to attack them. But you did. No! God! God, please, no! I don't think we have to answer any more of your questions. Sheila! Sheila! Where are you? I don't know! You played with them like a cat playing with its prey. So? Peg! She knows everything, Daryl. You're going to trip right into a confession if you ain't careful. No, I won't. But you did play with them before you killed them. Joke's on you, smarty pants. We didn't kill them. Really? Really. We took them to the emergency room. They were fine. Why did you take them to the emergency room? They were sick. And how did they get sick? I don't know must have been something they ate. But you're sure they're okay? I just told you. We took them to the- Yes, but that was 48 hours ago. A lot can happen in 48 hours. And if they succumb to their injuries during that time, it's still murder. I think I'd like my phone call, please. And not with my cell. You guys are blocking that somehow. I want a landline. Who would you call? What? If we gave you a phone call, who would you call? What do you mean, if you gave us a phone call? You have to. Answer my question. Well, we would, um... A lawyer. Which one? I don't know. I suppose we'd look online. A good criminal lawyer. Is that what you need? A good criminal lawyer? Well, you tell us. You can't keep us here without charging us with something. Can you? I'm just curious about your thinking. Why would you call someone to help with your legal troubles when those aren't really the problem? What do you mean? Are you under arrest? We can't leave here, apparently. That doesn't answer my question. Are you under arrest? Who are you? Someone trying to ascertain the situation. Do you know what happened to Sheila and Pete? No. Really? I I don't... I'm not... What happened to Sheila and Pete? I can't remember. Crap. Neither can I. Did we black out? I I don't know. Daryl, I'm scared. It's okay, baby. It's okay. Let's go back 24 hours. You received a phone call, Peg. What? A phone call. You received a phone call from a man you'd never talked to before, but someone whose name you knew well. Hello? Do you remember his name, Peggy? Margaret Anderson. Yes? Do you remember? Good afternoon. This is Cyrus. What? I believe you heard me. I'm... I'm I'm sorry, you said you'd never call. I said I'd never call without a reason. Oh. Is Daryl there? Honey? Put me on speaker. Sup, babe? It's Cyrus. What? Cyrus. He's on the phone. 
he said he'd never call. Good afternoon, Daryl. Oh, um, hi. I'm sorry to bother you on this bright and inviting day, but I believe a situation has developed. Uh, what is that? You'll recall several years ago when you and Peggy visited me. We came to an agreement? Do you recall our meeting, both of you? Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. I suppose we do. I was to provide the both of you with certain privileges, and you were to follow the rules. Do you remember the rules? Yeah, of course. What was the primary rule, Daryl? Peggy, what was the primary rule? Um, that meeting was a long time ago Consensual and- Consensual only. That's the primary rule. What we do, we do with the consent of our donors. Period. No exceptions. Well, I don't know what you've heard, but we've followed the rules. Yeah. The Hendersons, Sheila and Peter, you know them? Um... Don't bother denying it. The Hendersons, you went to school together, you work together, you're even in each other's weddings. But now, you have chosen to feed on them. Well, the thing is... What kind of moronic, entitled idiots are you? This coven has survived centuries by following simple, easily adapted rules. Common sense rules. And in one night of abject stupidity, you tear it all down. Look, we, we just thought they might want to join, and then they didn't want to, and then things got out of hand. They were in the hospital for four days. Well, I mean... The physical damage was repaired easily enough, but there are psychological concerns, especially for Sheila. Look, we're real sorry, but I don't know what you want us to do. I want you to remain exactly where you are. It will be easier on all of us that way. What? You forgot the rules. Did you forget the penalty for breaking them, too? You can't be serious. I am as serious as the tomb. If you are anything but self-indulgent, short-sighted trolls, you know what's going to happen next. The Hendersons are going to seek restitution only to discover the two of you have no money, since you spent every paycheck as quickly as you get it. That will lead them to ask, how did our friends Daryl and Peggy become the monsters that hurt us so? Is some outside entity responsible? And that will lead them to the Coven. The Coven cannot take that chance. We won't tell them, we promise! Your promises are worthless. You knew the penalty when you pricked your finger and signed in blood. Remain where you are. It will be easier that way. Do you think he was serious? I don't know. Let me think. They can't really do anything to us, can they? Just let me think. This is crazy. I, it was just... They can't really do anything to us, Shut can they? up! Shut up! We have to run. What? We have to go, babe. We gotta get out of here. What are you talking about? They're crazy. All of them. They were serious about that blood oath stuff. No, they, they can't be. Did you hear him? Besides, what do you want to do? Sit here and wait to see if he was serious? Maybe he just wanted to scare us? Well, it worked. Pack your stuff. We can't leave. We have to. We've lived here our whole lives, Daryl. Where are we going to go? I don't know. The cities? Daryl. I don't know, okay? I don't know how any of this stuff happens, so I don't know how to get us out of it. We just have to go. Sheila. What? I need to talk to Sheila. I can convince her to keep it to herself. Cyrus said that was the problem, right? He was afraid the Hendersons would come after them. Yeah. Then I just have to convince her to drop it. I can always convince her to do anything. I don't think you could convince her about this. You gotta do Pete. I can't. We can do this. The Coven, remember? There were benefits. We were supposed to get powers. We should be able to hypnotize people. We've never been any good at that stuff. We've always had to trick our victims. Donors. Oh, please. You know as well as I do they were victims. I can't control anyone. I could never even get my damn dog to sit on command. But, Daryl, we can't leave. This is home. Do you... Do you want to stand and fight? Do you? What was that? Back door. Jeez, was it unlocked? Well, you were supposed to lock up. No, you were. No, you! Shut up! You shut up! Both of you, <laughs> shut up! We didn't mean it. I can talk to Sheila. We didn't mean it. Please. I'm sorry. Me too, I'm really sorry. Why? What? Why did you do what you did? That's what we're trying to understand. 
Where are we? This isn't... this isn't our house. You're being interviewed. You're being asked questions about the roadhouse, and about Sheila and Pete, and about the coven, and everything. Remember? We don't know anything about any coven. Why did you do it? Why did I do what? Why did you join a coven of vampires? You are two of the most vanilla human beings we have ever encountered. Your idea of exotic is General Sow's chicken. You are shallow and adolescent and apparently happy to be that way. Why did you do it? We... we were getting old. That's what this was about? Vanity? Sure, I guess. You joined a coven of vampires to stay young? They're not real vampires. Not really. Are you sure? What? Are you sure? Who are you exactly? I will let you in on a little secret. Vampires don't like having their name taken in vain. No pun intended. So at their request, we're going to end this interview right now. What's that? This will be a fascinating way to ascertain the situation. What is that? Are you playing at something? Playtime is over. It's snack time now. No! No! no please! Please! No! 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 You have been listening to Glory Days, part of the Icebox Radio Theater series Frozen Frights, Aurora Borealis. The cast in order of appearance featured Trelawney Irwin as Peggy, Justin Kapla as Daryl, Diane Adams was the interviewer, and Caleb Silvers portrayed Doug the victim and Cyrus. Direction and sound design by Jeffrey Adams. Some sound effects by the Freesound Project, available at freesound.org. This program copyright 2020 by the Icebox Radio Theater, which is solely responsible for its content. Learn more at iceboxradio.org. The following podcast includes a depiction of violence, which may be distressing to some listeners. Check the show notes for details and exact times. In the far reaches of the north, upon a canvas of cold, star-filled sky, a symphony of color and cosmic radiation plays through the winter night. It is beautiful and terrifying, silent and cacophonous, colorful and Bible black. It is the Northern Lights, mankind's oldest unsolved mystery. If you listen to them very, very carefully, you can hear the millions of voices trapped within. This is Frozen Frights. Aurora Borealis. Mr. Peterson? Mr. Peterson. What? There's no smoking in here. Oh, yeah? That is correct. We have told you that more than once. We have told you there is no smoking. Yeah. You are the most fascinating case we have studied. Did you know that? Oh, thanks. I think you're real nice, too. You are being sarcastic. Yep. Why are you being difficult? Don't think I am. So can I go now? You are not being detained. Sure seems like I am. We are not here to detain you. We are here to ascertain the situation. 
The situation fascinates us. But I can go. You are not being detained. See ya, dummy. What is this? What is what? What do you got here? Some kind of fun house or something? I don't understand. Oh, you don't, huh? While I leave that door over there, I come right in through that one. Is that a problem? I can't leave. Of course it's a problem. You did leave. Then you came back. Smart Alec. As you can see, you are not being detained. You are free to move about as much as you wish. Think you're pretty damn smart, don't you? I am here to ascertain the situation. The very definition of that task suggests we lack knowledge we require. What? What knowledge? Who are you people? What the hell am I doing here? What's this all about? Murder. What did you say? You asked me what it is all about. It's about murder. The murder you committed. I don't know what you're talking about. We are here to ascertain the situation. Well, you can't prove anything. It's all just hearsay and slander. You know, I'll sue you, you son of a bitch. We do not wish to ascertain the situation pertaining to the murder right away. We wish to understand the background first. Background? Yes. The circumstances behind it all. We wish to understand. We wish to ascertain the situation. The whole situation. What the hell you talking about? We thought you might want to take advantage of your opportunity. Well, I don't. Opportunity for what? To set us straight. Huh? We don't understand the situation. We thought you might want to set us straight, just as you have many of your friends and neighbors. Even strangers you meet in town. You set people straight all the time, do you not? You kidding me? You fancy yourself quite the expert. I don't much like your tone, mister. Why? I'm complimenting you. <laughs> complimenting me. You don't believe me. Smart boys like you don't compliment people like me. They don't come around to decent people and ask to be set straight. And yet, in this situation, that is exactly what I am doing. Well, I don't believe you. It is true. Why should I believe that? Because I am here to ascertain the situation. And we do not understand the situation. Your situation. My situation, huh? You don't get it? No. Well, I'll tell you about my situation. Sick and tired. That's my situation. Sick and tired of what? All of it. Everything. Sick and tired of being one of the very few that can see through the bullcrap of what's going on. They feed us lies all day, every day. People just slop it up like prize hogs. Who is feeding you lies? Well, the media, of course. Haven't you been paying attention? Politicians have the media in their pocket, and they beam their signals into our brains, and the people just lap it up because it's what they want to hear. And then... When a decent man gets himself elected president, they won't leave him alone. Just attack him 24 hours a day. Take apart every little thing he says and they twist it and they turn it around until... Until what? Well, until he sounds like an idiot. Do you think he's an idiot? You think a man gets to be president by being an idiot? You're awfully quiet all of a sudden. Didn't expect to hear this, I bet. I will admit, I did not. Well, that's because you probably never met a decent man before. Man who'll tell you the truth. Tell me the truth. About what? You are allowing me to select the topic? Sure, why not? Very well. Tell me the truth of the pandemic. <laughs> yes? Pandemic. Yes, you lived through it. What I lived through was the spring of 2020. I don't know about any pandemic. 
you doubt there was one. I just think it's awfully convenient that right about the time President Trump's approval ratings going through the roof, a mysterious pandemic hits. You do not think there was one? Oh, yeah, some people got sick, sure. But all the rest of it? Shutting down the restaurants, shutting down sports. Jesus, they canceled March Madness. You know how much money that cost? You know how many people lost their jobs? No. Do you? A lot. That's how many. Did you? Did I what? Did you lose your job? You trying to be funny? I am trying to ascertain the situation. Sure you are. Sure. Did you lose your job? No. You did not? That's what I just said. I'm on... disability. Military. Come again? Is everything okay, Sergeant? Hold on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I understand, sir. No, sir. The unit had to... Well, I know protocol says we don't split up, but the Taliban's figured that out, sir. We, we show up in a the village, they scatter to the winds. Uh, are we in trouble? Shh. Yes, sir. Copy that. I understand. What's wrong? Oh, it's hit the fan. Come on. Where are we going? Back to the rally point. Come on. Yes, sir. And for the last time, Pete, I'm not an officer. I work for a living. You address me as sergeant, not sir. Yes, sergeant. Take point. Yes, sergeant. And for God's sake, quit pouting. You're a United States soldier engaging the enemy in hostile territory. Don't mope around like a damn schoolboy's been turned down for the prom. Yes, sergeant. I'm just... Right. I'm trying real hard, Sergeant. It's not a spelling bee, Pete. Just survive your deployment and you've done your job. Right. You know, it's weird. Some of this territory kind of reminds me of... Oh. Private. Private. Pete. Pete! Ah! <laughs> Dad? Jeez. Dad, are you alright? Fine. I'm fine. Was it a dream? Of course not. I I was just reading something and it... Uh, I got upset, I guess. Upset? Yeah. Can you believe the stuff they let them print now? What's this? What do you mean? Pretty obvious what I mean. These pills. What about them? Have you been taking them? Of course. Not that they do any damn good. I filled this two weeks ago. The bottle looks the same. You're not taking them, are you? I take them when I need them. Dad, you cannot do this. The therapy doesn't work if you don't follow the instructions. I'm fine. Bullshit. Language. You just woke up with another nightmare. Oh, you're living inside my head now. No, but it's a small house, Dad. I heard you scream the name Pete. That was the name of that kid that got killed in Afghanistan, wasn't it? I asked the doctor not to tell you anything about that. Yeah, well, I can be persistent. <laughs> it was Pete, wasn't it? The kid? You were rejoining the rest of your squad when he stepped on a mine? Jesus, did they give you the whole damn report to read? Yes. What? Fine, no, but they gave me enough. Dad, you have to take your therapy for this, or you're never going to get better. Hi, ah, jeez. You just like your mother. Exaggerate everything. Scared out of your own damn shadow. Don't change the subject. Drama. That's what it is. You can't resist a little drama. Your mother was the same way. She couldn't resist the chance to sink her teeth into some juicy gossip. <laughs> I don't think your PTSD qualifies as gossip. I do not have PTSD. Docs are trigger-happy with that stuff. You come in with a hangnail, they'll call it PTSD now. Dad. Whole world's been pussified. Any little thing goes wrong, we have to make a big to-do about it. Used to be we get on with things. Go in, finish the job, get paid. That was it. Dad, you've got to take your therapy seriously, or it's going to be more nightmares and more sleepless nights. And you can't afford to be sick right now. If you needed a hospital, there wouldn't be a bed for you. The virus has them full up. 
That's another thing. This virus everyone's on about. What the hell's so scary about the flu? It's not the flu. People die the flu every year. It's a shame, but it's a fact. Why this big mess? Yeah, I'll tell you why. Because people sit on their butts all day. They're too lazy to do work, so they feel like crap. So they spend their time dreaming up reasons to feel like crap. You have to take this seriously. I am taking it seriously. I take the destruction of my country from the inside very seriously, Lena. Dad. I'm, I'm going down the busy bee. The busy bee's closed. Well, I'll go to the tap then. Could use something stronger than coffee anyway. It's closed too. Everything's closed by order of the governor, remember? You spent a good hour haranguing that decision last night. I I just gotta get out of here. You wanna go for a walk? <laughs> well, go out back. Some air will do you good. I'll, I'll call Dave. He'd open up the tap for me. He's a friend. He's not gonna open the bar for one customer. Well, we'll open her up. Word will get around town. Dave will be the only bar open, and he'll make a mint. He can't open his bar because the governor ordered them all shut down. Just a couple weeks, we gotta keep this thing from spreading, and that will keep people from dying, especially your friends who are all in the at-risk group, not to mention you. My friends are a hell of a lot tougher than you think. Fine, go. But I'm not driving you. You can walk. Jeez, Lena, it's, it's two miles. Exercise will do you good. Go. Turning into quite the little witch, aren't you? With a capital B, I might add. Daughters, what the hell's the point of them? Where are you going? Thought I'd work on the barbecue for a little while, since I'm trapped here. What was your reasoning? What? Your reasoning for disagreeing with the official orders to remain sheltered in place. Didn't agree with them. But you were a soldier. So? You worked under authority. You understand authority. I'm out of the army now. I don't need to take another order ever again if I don't want to. Is that why you do not take the medication? Don't need those pills. Do you have dreams? Everyone has dreams. Do you experience trauma? Oh, not so much. I need to take those damn pills. But I do not understand. Why not take the pills? What do you have to gain for avoiding them? I can take the damn pills or not. It's up to me. But what do you have to gain? Well, if you can't see it, I'm not going to waste my time explaining things to you. I do not understand. Uh Uh-huh. Do you feel good without them? Your mental and physical condition is adequate? Sure. There is another aspect we wish to ascertain. Whatever. I don't care. It is the situation with your community, specifically the virus which afflicted it. Don't know anything about that. I am thinking specifically about how it affected you and your relationships. Told you. Don't know anything about it. That is not how you acted. Hello? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. You had a conversation with an associate. Hello, Bob. It's Roy. Well, well, how you old up? Well, fair to Midland. You? No, we're all right. I can't complain. Nope, sure can't. Say, I was thinking about going down to the Busy Bee. Want to join me? Well, uh, gee, Roy, I'd sure like to, but, you know, I think it's closed. Nah, nah. It's open? Should be. It's a Tuesday afternoon. Well, yeah, but I thought the governor closed all the restaurants. Well, I didn't vote for him, so I figure all's fair. Roy? I'll get Lena and pick you up in ten. You be out in the alley, okay? Roy, hold up a second. Are you okay? Well, what do you mean? Well, this all that's going on, you're acting like it doesn't affect you. It's a pandemic. It's affecting everybody. You know, if you don't want to go to coffee, just say so. I worry about you, buddy, okay? I mean, you can't just laugh this one off. This is serious business. You're right, it is serious business. Okay, well, I'm glad to hear it. It's serious business when a good man like you gets brainwashed by so little. Hey, now. No, 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 you just stay home. Shelter in place. Maybe we'll get you a blankie and a pacifier and you'll be all set. Well, there's no reason to take that attitude. Well, I'm just talking about going to coffee. Well, you go ahead. See what it gets you. Go down to the busy bee and knock all night. Why don't you lick the damn doorknob while you're there? Do us all a favor. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, I'm, I'm 
I'm sorry, Roy. That was over the line. What did you mean, do us all a favor? I'm just gonna go, all right? What'd you mean by that? Take care of yourself, Roy. Bob? Bob! Why? Why what? Why did you anger your best friend? Oh, I didn't anger him. He angered me. But why? It makes no sense. You knew the coffee shop was closed. Well, we didn't know that for sure. Yes, you did. There had been an announcement. You had been by the building already. There was a sign on the door. Well, you don't know till you try, do you? Would have gotten us out of the house anyway. But you were arguing with your friend. It caused a rift between the two of you. Oh, if there was a rift, his fault, not mine. A puzzle. What? You are a puzzle. You claim that the pandemic does not exist despite all evidence. I'm entitled to my opinion. Opinions are irrelevant. The pandemic either exists or does not exist. All I'm saying is, you don't need to slurp up what the media's dishing out. It's a choice. But the cost of ignoring warnings, sickness, death, spreading disease to people you associate with. Which would be a pretty big deal if the media weren't such a pack of liars. But the price of being wrong was too much... Let me make one thing clear to you. I'll tell you when I'm wrong. Understand? I'll tell you when I'm wrong. No. What? You asked if we understand. We do not. We do not ascertain this situation. Well, whose fault is that? We come to the crux. What's that? We come to the crux of the situation. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about Leo. Roy? Roy? Hmm? Over here. What? Oh, it's you. Uh, don't come any closer. Wasn't planning on it. Oh, good, good. Hey, I thought you was supposed to be in Florida for another two weeks. Well, that was the plan, originally. Uh, thanks for watching the house over the winter. Huh. A real neighborly of you. Well, that's what neighbors are for, Leo. Imagine you forgot that. Well, yeah, well, that was kind of what I wanted to talk to you about. Do you have a minute? You speak up there. I say, do you have a minute to talk? There's something I have to tell you. Go ahead. Uh, can you come a little closer? We can be six feet apart, you know. <sighs> All right, I'm here. What is it? Well, um, well, that is... Uh, Could you spit it out, please? Need to get back to that barbecue. We're losing daylight. Oh, well, maybe we can talk later, then. No, no, you got me out of my chair, Leo. Now, what is it? It's, uh, it's about this virus that's going around. Yeah, I know. What about the horrible killer flu? Well, I need to... That is, to be a responsible neighbor, I feel I have to... I've got it. What did you say? Now, don't come any closer. What did you just say? Did you... Did you say you had it? I was tested down in Orlando. Tested? You mean for the coronavirus? Yes. I was exposed on a day cruise, and I have a neighbor whose daughter's a doctor. Things weren't so busy yet, so she got me a test right away. You were supposed to stay there. The governor, everyone said you were supposed to stay there. I know. What the hell's wrong with you? I know, I'm sorry. It's just... We live in a pretty tight quarters there in the trailer park, and... I have more room up here. You were supposed to stay there, Leo. I didn't want to make everyone sick. We all kind of pal around together down there, but up here, we sort of keep our distance, naturally. <laughs> Oh, naturally. Besides, spring break hit and the young people came and they wouldn't listen to anyone, so they crowded up the beaches and I just... 
I wanted to come home. Jesus. You didn't fly, did you? N no, of course not. I drove my summer car all the way. I have to find a place to store it over the winter. It didn't hardly stop either, just drive throughs for food, and I'd only do self-serve gas, and I had disinfectant wipes, wipe down the pump handle every time. You were supposed to stay there. That's what they all said. Shelter in place, especially down there in Florida. Well, what's done is done. And I've reported to the county health department here. They've scolded me too. Good. So, are you sick? No, and it's been nearly two weeks. I could be asymptomatic. Spreading germs without getting sick yourself. You would find a way to do the plague in the most selfish way possible. Roy, I I'm really sorry. But I thought you had to know. Yeah, well, that's that's something, I suppose. Oh, thank you for understanding. I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, you just stay on your side of the fence and we'll be fine. Oh, and make it four weeks, not two, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, about that. What? I was, uh, well, I can see why you'd be mad about this. What is it, Leo? I just, uh, there's hardly any food in the house. I've been gone all winter, and I don't want to go to the store because of the... Maybe you'd better just tell me exactly what it is you're talking about. Nerve of that guy. What? What is it? Selfish, rotten little... Dad! That, that, that Leo next door. Can you believe him? What are you talking about? What's wrong? Leo. It's our neighbor. Selfish little, limp-wristed, I don't... Dad, stop. Tell me what happened. Leo is back from Florida. I thought he wasn't coming back for two weeks. Oh, he came back all right. Brought us all a little present, too. He's got it. What? The virus? Yep. He admitted it to me right up front. Seemed pretty damn proud of himself, too. Is he sick? Well, no, I just told you he has the virus. Yeah, but is he showing symptoms? Remember, you can carry this thing a long time before you get sick. Nah, I said he felt fine. That's just like him, too. Huh. Did he say why he came back? Because he felt like it, of course. Always thought of himself first, just like everyone else around here. No, Dad... Why did he say he came back? Did he tell you? I, I don't know. That Something about the people down there being too close that he could isolate himself better up here. You ever heard such nonsense? Well, actually, that makes a lot of sense. What? It makes a lot of sense. He has that whole house to himself, and there aren't nearly as many people here. He can keep himself isolated. Do you hear yourself? That man broke the law. Governor ordered everyone in Florida to stay put, and he busted out. Spread the damn plague across half the country while he drove north, too. Dad. Half a mind to call the cops. He didn't break any laws. Well, it's a governor's order, ain't it? Yes, and with how you've been quoting the Constitution at me for the past year, I would think you knew the difference. Oh, and while we're on the subject of things you like to talk about, what happened to the coronavirus being a big scare? I was, I was before it was shoved in my face, practically. Dad. I never said there wasn't a virus. Never said it weren't dangerous, neither. It just wasn't going to be dangerous to us. We were doing a real good job of keeping it out of this town, and that man dumped it right in our laps. You did say there wasn't a virus. What? You said it all last week. You kept saying it was just the flu. Why are you upset if it's just the flu? Why? Oh, I'll tell you why. You know what that little sucker asked me to do? Who, Leo? He asked me, can you believe this one? After dragging the plague right to the doorstep, he asked me to go buy him groceries. What? Yeah. Said the house has been shut up all winter, didn't have no food. Well, whose fault is that? Oh, that poor man. Have you heard anything I've said? I'm going over and talk to him. Not, I forbid you, Lena. He's diseased and contagious, and he's going to make you sick, which will make me sick. We're supposed to help our neighbors, Dad, and he has no food. Well, he'd uh, have plenty of food if he'd stayed in Florida. Do you want anything from the store? Lena, I I'm warning you. I'll get a jug of that sweet tea you like. Lena? Lena! Ah! <laughs> You were upset. Not that much. 
We believe you were very upset. You broke things. Oh, he's been a little clumsy. Did you intend to harm her? What? Your daughter. Did you intend to harm her in some way? How can you say that? Did you intend no, to hurt your daughter? No, of course not. What, what kind of fool question is that? We are trying to ascertain the situation. Well, don't do it with a lot of stupid questions. It is not a stupid question. You were violent, angry. You broke things in the kitchen because of what she did. Well, doesn't mean I wanted to hurt her. Good God, she's all I got left. We do not understand you. Well, I'm not surprised. You haven't listened to me for even two seconds. You seem very passionate about your beliefs, but they seem to change from moment to moment. Well, that ain't true. And there, when we assert something that is undeniably true, you deny it when it suits your purpose. Deny it with no explanation. I don't have to explain myself to anybody. If you're too stupid to see the truth, that's not my problem. We do not understand you. We have been ascertaining the situation for some time, but we don't understand you. You are a puzzle. Like I say, just gotta open your ears. No. What? No. We do not need to open our ears. We need to see what happened. We need to make use of the record and return to the key moment. What are you blabbing about? The key moment. The one decision you made that seems to inform all the others. The moment that makes the least sense. I don't know what you're talking about. But that shouldn't come as any surprise. The key moment. What key moment? The night you returned to your neighbor's home unbidden. The night it happened. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello, Leo. Roy? What are you doing here? Wanted to talk to you. You should have called, Roy. You can't be in here. I haven't sanitized the surfaces today. What are you doing tonight? Roy, you can't be here. You'll spread it. Is... is that a gun? Let's talk. You and me. Uh, what do you think you're Sit doing? Sit down, Leo. There. Watching the news? Uh, yes. With the sound down? Uh, I don't need it. With all those words around this screen, you don't really need the, to listen. I hate all the words around the screen. It's confusing. Um, Roy... CNN, I see. Well, there's a big shock. Don't suppose you ever turn on Fox. Roy, what are you doing? Answer my question. What? My question. Uh, what question? About Fox? Yeah. Answer it. Honestly. No. No, I don't watch Fox. Big surprise. Don't watch nothing you don't agree with. Why'd you do it, Leo? Why'd you come back? Uh, I don't know. You exposed me. You exposed my daughter. Uh, that's not true. We were never closer than ten feet from each other. Infecting the whole town. Selfish. For everyone. Everyone's always selfish, thinking of themselves. Roy, why do you have a gun? It's my right. Second Amendment. Oh, that's why you own a gun. I'm asking you why you have it right now. Protection. From what? From selfish people. People what want to take what's mine. I don't want anything from you, Roy. That's what they all say. You know, in the service we had guys like you. Guys who wouldn't think of no one but themselves. Uh, Roy, what are you doing here? They train you up to work as a team, but some guys, they never get that message. Just look out for themselves day after day. Roy, talk to me. In training, say guys like that will be the first to go, first to get knocked out in combat. That with a team, there is strength. Oh, but they're wrong. Roy, please. The selfish guys, they get through it. It's the ones looking to help everyone that end up dead. It's the ones what follow orders. They take point when you tell them to, even when they're scared spitless. Kind of a punk move on the commander's part, ain't it? 
Putting a kid on point doesn't know no better. Roy. Stepped on the first damn landmine he come to. What? Because I gotta protect her, that's why. I gotta protect everyone. I got to. Everyone's got their head in the sand but me. What are you talking about? I'm sorry, Leo. Roy? Roy! Residents are still encouraged to remain in their homes, but officials are optimistic that COVID-19 is now on the far side of the curve in our state. Hospitals are confident they can handle the load from here on. And though everyone is encouraged to be cautious, the end appears in sight for the pandemic of 2020. In other news, today... Oh, it's you. <coughs> Hello, Mr. Peterson. How you feeling? Oh, fine, detective. <coughs> Got the guy killed Leo yet? Well, that's what I'm here about. So, no, then. Well, it's been slow going. Pandemic slowing everything down. Didn't you hear the news? It's over. <coughs> well, it came to town late. Two weeks, you haven't caught a burglar. Pretty damn slow, if you ask me. <coughs> Has it been two weeks? Gosh, it doesn't seem like that long. One thing, though. What? You, uh, you have an interesting habit. Whenever you refer to Leo's murder, you indicate a burglar did it. Well, who else? <coughs> well, that's the problem. There was nothing taken from his house. No sign of a disturbance. Well, probably just meth heads. They don't know what they're doing half the time. Uh, true enough, but thing is, when meth heads go through a house, they don't tidy up after themselves. Usually it looks like a tornado hit it. <coughs> huh. <coughs> Leaves me with a lot of questions about your neighbor's murder. Who would hate him that much? Can't think of who would. He was well-liked here. Well-liked down where he wintered in Florida. I mean, the only thing he ever did wrong was travel after he'd been diagnosed with COVID. Yeah. Pretty bad of him to do that. <coughs> Still, he isolated himself. He was the only case in town. Well, that we know of. <coughs> That's a dry cough, Mr. Peterson. <coughs> yeah. Allergies. <coughs> you feeling feverish? I'm fine. <coughs> you know, the hospital got a shipment of tests in. State's got a pretty good system in place now. They're real concerned about flare-ups, so they want to test as many as possible. What are them gloves for? Oh, the gloves. They're for the handcuffs. Roy, you got a gun in the house? You know I do. Yeah. Let's go get you tested. And I'll take that gun, too. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> I think you know. Let's get you tested, Roy. I think you might have been exposed. <laughs> you have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. You pled not guilty. Of course. Even though you did it, you murdered your neighbor? Can't prove it. They have the gun. They have the fact that you came down with the coronavirus when the only possible way you could have contracted it was from your neighbor. Hmm. You shrug at this. Well, what else can I do? They want to put together a bunch of lies, parade them around, that's their business. The gun. Ballistics match. Why, it was a plant. Wasn't my gun. It was your service weapon. Well, and then they took it to the range and fired it to get some shells that matched. Oh, there's a million ways to set up a frame. But you actually did it. We know this. You know this. I don't have the foggiest idea what you think you know. I see. Our course is clear. Good. Can I go now, 
are you going to do your magic trick with the doors again? No. Walk through that door. So long, dummy. What the hell? We're sorry, Roy. It's freezing. Yes. Your world is very hot to us. What? The temperature. I'm afraid you won't survive very long. But this will be an excellent opportunity for us. We must ascertain the situation. It's so damn cold, it ain't natural. It's, it's spring. <gasps> not here it isn't. Now relax. Do not harm our young. What? What is this? Just relax. This, there, there are bugs all over me. Caterpillars, actually. Uh, Harmless. Get them off. Get, get them off. <laughs> we need to study you more thoroughly. <gasps> What's going on? Get off me. I, I gotta go home. You can't be in your home, Roy. Your presence is very necessary for us here. We must ascertain the situation. And you are a vital part of that process. That's why we need you in quarantine. What? Quarantine, Roy. Here, in our home, you can remain as you are safe from the influence of others. But, but I got a clean bill of health from the doc. <sighs> oh, this is not about the virus. The virus is none of our concern. This quarantine is for your mind, and to give us a chance to understand that mind, at least until you freeze to death. I don't. I, you gotta let me go. No, Roy, we don't. But, I got... I got rights. Not here. I, my, my family. What about my girl? We will keep an eye on her as we ascertain the situation. But, but I want to go home. No, Roy. We must understand your mind. We must understand it before we can move forward. You are important, Roy. The way you think. The way you act are things we must understand, and we cannot take the risk of you being contaminated by others. You must remain here. You must remain in quarantine. Oh, God. They're in my ears. Relax, Roy. It will all be over soon. You have been listening to Quarantine, part of the Icebox Radio Theater series Frozen Frights, Aurora Borealis. The cast in order of appearance featured Justin Kapla as the interviewer, Jeffrey Adams was Roy, Scott Sulak played Bob, Leo, and the detective, Billy Joe Cones played Lena and the TV anchor, and David Griffith played the soldier. Script, direction, and post-production by Jeffrey Adams. Some sound effects from the Freesound Project at freesound.org. The Dread by the wonderful Kevin MacLeod at incompetech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. This program copyright 2020 by the Icebox Radio Theater, which is solely responsible for its content. Learn more at iceboxradio.org. And that was uh, that was the beginning of the the project. The what? 
the 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 project uh, the part with the thing uh, government work i thought you were telling me about driving truck to duluth oh 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 yeah my, my mind it, it wanders yes uh, i can still remember things probably don't seem like that for a young person but i can i i can remember uh, pro projects uh, houses houses uh, you know what i mean the uh, Places, things. I have a little problem. Yes. My memory. I still remember things. I remember everything. Yes. But the words get lost. I have a trick. If I can't think of a word, I always end up saying something like project. A placeholder word. Yeah, yeah, that's just what Carol called it. Carol? Waitress. My, my favorite waitress, the one down at the, the house. House is another placeholder word. What? Never mind. Your file, Harold. Had it there. Your file has some gaps in time. Well, I, I want to cooperate. That's good. I don't want to be no trouble. That's good. It's just uh, my memory. I understand, but we must try. We must try to ascertain the situation, Harold. Do you understand? Uh, no. I know this is difficult. Your condition makes this difficult. I still remember everything. But we need to try to understand. You live alone? My myrtle passed ten years ago. There was some confusion about that, wasn't there? What do you mean? The police questioned you. Even detained you for a while. Your wife, Myrtle, was declared dead. But they never found the body, correct? Yeah, we don't know what happened to Myrtle. She, uh, she, she disappeared. Did the police suspect foul play? Oh, no, no. Her, her mind, it was worse than mine is now. Uh, we don't live but two blocks from the river. You think she drowned herself? Uh, I think she wandered off. She was always wandering off at the end. One time I found her down at the house there in just her nightgown. You mean at the shopping mall? Uh, yeah, yeah. You live in your home alone now? Uh, yeah. You're on medications, correct? For dementia? Uh, yes. That seems dangerous. You must have some help. Oh, oh, my girl Penny lives with me. Her husband does too. I thought he said you lived alone. Huh? Dad? Alone. Uh, no, I said uh, my girl and her husband live with me. Dad! She's not... I mean, they live with me. She's not a caregiver or anything. I'm, I'm not infirm. Dad, where are you? Of course, I suppose it could come to that. But I'd rather walk into the river myself than let that happen. Dad, where the hell are you? Oh, down here, hon. What? I'm in the basement. Dad, we talked about this. Hmm? We talked about this, remember? I don't want you coming down the basement stairs anymore. Oh, they're solid. Yeah, but you're not. Have you had a dizzy spell today? Oh, no, not that I can remember. Ha ha. Oh, something funny? You get dizzy coming down the stairs, didn't you? I... I don't know. Ask Harris. Harris is on a run to Duluth, remember? Oh, oh that's, that's right. He, he doesn't know how lucky he is. That when I used to drive truck to Duluth... The roads were oiled gravel, and you couldn't go but 30 miles an hour. You've mentioned it, yes. Did you take your pills? Uh, yes. Well, then what's the pill container doing here on the table? Oh, oh I, I must have forgot. You did get dizzy going down the stairs, didn't you? Uh, no, no. You did. That's why you're in that chair. Lord, Dad, I don't know what you want in this basement. I used to have a shop down here. Yes, I know, before you built the shed out back. Oh, that's right. That's a, a good shed. Pot-bellied stove and everything. And then it burned down and you lost all of your tools. Well. Dad, I have to go to work. I remembered the shed burned, you know. I know, but I have to go to work and Harris won't be back till late. Are you going to be okay here? Oh, of course, of course. Oh, you worry too much. I worry the correct amount. We're not playing games here, Dad. This is really happening. I'll be careful, and I'll be safe. Here, give me them pills. I'm serious, Dad. Have you thought any more about Lakeshore? No, you're the one who keeps bringing that up. I was doing some figuring, and, and with your pension, 
we should be able to swing it. Oh, it's not about the money. Old Pete Henderson went into that place and was dead in a week. That's because Pete Henderson was 95. He waited too long, so he couldn't take advantage of any of the programs. Bingo and the outings and cable TV, memory care. Oh, I don't need memory care. You do need memory care. Well, if I did need memory care, I, I wouldn't remember needing it, which is the same thing as not needing it. <laughs> you're funny. Oh, and you're the apple of my eye, sweetie. Thanks, Dad. Uh, say, when are you and Harris going to give me some grandchildren? Dad, we talked about this. I can't, remember? Oh, oh, sweetie, I, I'm so sorry. It's, it's okay. I, I don't know where my mind is today. I, I, I knew that. I, I, I knew it. It's okay, Dad. I'm just a stupid old fool. No, I, Dad, I, I don't. don't. Lose my head if it weren't screwed on. I hurt you, didn't I? No. I, I'm so sorry. I keep dredging up grandkids, and I don't even know why. Of all the things not to remember. It's okay. Dad, I have to go to work. Oh, of course. You go ahead. You'll take your pills? <laughs> Got them right here. And don't worry about the stairs, none. I never get dizzy going up, only coming down. All right. I'm going to have to pull a double shift, but I'll bring you dinner on my break. The meatloaf? Oh, whatever's fine. I'm not picky. I love you, Daddy. This is another aspect of the situation we must ascertain. Hmm? It is of particular interest to us. What's that? What? Your mind. Your mind is vital to our ability to ascertain this situation. You sometimes hear voices, correct? Uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, you know why, why you keep, keep coming, coming down, down the stairs? stairs. I do. I've, I've always, always known. known. Yes, Harold, you do. And it is vital we understand this. The work cannot continue if we do not understand this. Uh, it ain't true. You know why you keep coming down the stairs? Quiet. I do. I've always known. Just be quiet. You don't bother me none, and I won't bother you. Oh, how does that work? I'm inside your brain. How can I leave you alone? Just do it. Just... Go back to hell where you belong. I'll be getting there soon enough, Harold. Both of us will. No. Oh, you sound confident. I have accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior. I know where I'm going. Oh, nice. Neat little answer. Pastor Fred would be proud. Just leave me alone. Can't. Any more than your big toe can leave you alone. I mean it. Now. So do I. But no harm. You're worried, aren't you? I told you I know where I'm going. Oh, not about that. About the other thing. About me. Well, what about you? You don't know who I am. You just know I'm in your head. <laughs> but you've got a sneaky suspicion. Uh, you're nothing. Next time they rearrange my meds, you'll probably disappear. Oh, you know that's not true. you got secrets here. Secrets you don't want anyone to know. Secrets you've kept for years. Oh, with that busted up brain of yours. Those secrets could leak out at any time. That's what you're afraid of, isn't it? That, that, that you did something horrible back in the day, and you can't remember what. I remember everything from before. It's new memory acquisition I can't do. Well, I listen to you, Mr. Big Words. But these aren't old memories you wanted to keep. These are old memories you threw away. Only they didn't go away. They hid inside that thick skull of yours. Found themselves a dark corner to lay low in. And that was fine by you. Only well, now, things aren't so organized up there. Things you thought were gone are starting to rumble around a little. I got no deep, dark secrets. I got nothing to hide. And how would you know that? What with your gray matter in such a state? I... I just know. Oh, Harold. You don't know anything. Anything at all. Harold? 
Harold. Are you ready to continue? Uh, uh, we, we're doing the project? Yes, Harold. We're doing the interview to ascertain the situation. <sighs> right. Uh, yeah, let, let's, let's just keep going. There was an event. An occurrence. What? The coffee shop last week. You were approached by a stranger. Do you remember? Oh, I remember. Oh, that I remember. Mostly by the smell. Hey. Piss, booze, and sweat. How the hell do you sweat in Minnesota in January, I'd like to know? Hey. Hey there. You've never seen him before? Never in my life. Hey, old man. Can I talk to you a second? Go peddle your papers. What? <sighs> Go someplace else. I don't have no spare change. I uh, didn't ask you for any. Whatever you're asking for, I ain't giving it. Shove off. You'll find a job. You got a job for me? No. There. Now you can't say I didn't look. What? I asked you for a job. That means I look. Oh, funny guy. Shove off. Nope. You and I have business. What? Business. You and I. You're Harold, right? Guy at the counter said you were. Oh, what of it? My dad and you did some work back in the day. Did some stuff together. I work with a lot of guys. No. This was special work. Work not everyone could know about. You know what I'm saying? Is it true what they said at the bar? That you ain't all there anymore? I don't need to sit and listen to this. I don't mean to be rude or nothing. Sure, sure you don't. It's just there's something you and I need to talk about. I don't even know you, son. I've never seen you before. You come into my favorite coffee shop and look like a bum and insulting me. Yeah, I'm sorry about the clothes and everything between jobs at the moment. Leave me alone. Didn't mean to insult you. The guys at the counter said you might not remember everything. I remember everything. Then you'll remember Carl Pansrum. What did you say? You'll remember my dad, Carl Pansrum. Don't bother denying it. I could see, I could see it on your face. Oh, sure, I know Carl Pansrum. <laughs> Who doesn't? He was in all the papers. Uh, murdered 22 people, didn't he? Allegedly. I thought he confessed in prison. That was just a play. He used to confess to unsolved murders and tell the cops that he could take them to where the bodies were buried, but he had to show them in person. He got out for a day that way. Cops always treated him real good on those little field trips. It's all BS, you said. Yeah, of course. I thought he took them to a few bodies, showed the cops were right where they were buried. Well, sure he did. How else do you think he'd get let out more than once? Yeah. How is it he knew where they were buried if he didn't kill them? Ah, uh, you know. Guy hears things in prison. Yeah, uh, that's, that's real interesting enough. If you'll excuse me. Didn't you hear what I said, old man? I'm his son. Oh, good for you. If you'll excuse me. He didn't tell the cops everything. He, he didn't tell them about every guy he helped out or teamed up with. He was real big on that, protecting the guys he worked with. He would do a lot of things, but he would never snitch, ever. What do you want? The last time I saw my old man, it was at a visiting day at Leavenworth. I was only like 15, if that. I had already gotten in trouble with the cops a couple of times, and Dad knew it. He didn't yell or try to moralize or anything. He knew the road I was on. It was the same road he'd been on his whole life. So he gave me something, something he said I could use. He told me about this man he'd known up in Minnesota, way up north on the border. A man he'd helped with a little problem once. You know what problem I'm talking about? I don't have any idea what you're talking about. This man had killed his wife, see? Dad didn't know if it was a fit of passion or a planned thing or what, but the man was in a blind panic because he had a dead body on his hands. Dad helped him dispose of it. They walled it up together in this guy's basement. Sound familiar to you? No. Yeah, it does. I could see it in your eyes. Dad told me all this because he knew things were going to be tough on me, just like they'd been tough on him. He said this guy was a union trucker, made pretty good money. He said if I was ever in a tough spot, I should look this guy up. Could probably touch him for a few oh, bills. Oh, that, that's what this is all about? You want money? Yeah, look at me. Do I look like I need money? Uh, what you need is a bath. All right. 
How about I come to your place and shower up? Leave me alone. Ah, we could take it out in trade. Maybe a room to sleep in, a few meals. You got a real pretty daughter. Can she cook? Just leave me alone or I'll call the cops. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? You call the cops. I tell them what really happened to your wife. Then they'd have both of us, only I got the advantage. You ever been inside, old man? Because I have. Hell, if you wanted to paint me for blackmail, I'd go willingly. Three hots in a cot, that's what prison means to me. But you, you'd last five minutes, and it would not be a pleasant five minutes. I said, leave me alone. Think about it, old man. I'll be around. I know where you live. It ain't true. You think not? I know. I would never have done that to Myrtle. Oh, you don't remember. You can't remember. I remember everything. I I just get confused sometimes. Uh-huh. Mix up words, that's all. Sharp sharp as attack, otherwise. Sharp, sharp as attack. Still and all. What? Still and all, you'd have some explaining to do. What do you mean? That bum's not going away. He can make trouble. I'll pay him off. You gave your bank account and all to Penny, remember? <laughs> if you needed cash, you'd have to ask her for it. Ah, she'll, she'll give over. Not without a lot of questions. And all she'd need was a look into your eyes. And then she'd know something was up. Oh, no, no. She, she's my little girl. <laughs> she's your keeper. Your nurse, nurse practically. practically. And she can read you as well as Myrtle ever could. Myrtle? Yeah, yeah, there's that too. What do you mean? You don't remember what happened to Myrtle, do you? Well, uh, of course I do. She she went into the hospital. Uh, female trouble. That was years ago. And she came right out. It didn't kill her. Well, of course it... You don't remember, do you? No. You keep telling people you remember everything. Truth is, you're losing more all the time. And this memory of what happened to Myrtle, that's the one you've been trying to get rid of. I remember the hospital. Why don't you just shut it? You don't remember anything more. Without Penny there to... Keep you on your pills. It would be one of those sad sets walking down the center of the street in your pajamas with your thing hanging out. Oh, stop it! What happened to that brave, strong trucker? Talked a big game about drinking himself to death before he was 30. Die young, you said. Don't get to this point, you said. Quiet. I can't think. 30, turn into 40. Turn it to 50, and so... I don't even know who you are. Oh, sure you do. I'm the voice in your head, Harold. I'm the part of you that remains. The part of you that's disgusted with what we become. I don't hear voices. Right, because that wouldn't be dementia, would it? That would mean just plain old crazy. Do, do you know? Do I know what? Do you know what happened to Myrtle. What do you care? I don't know what happened, do I? That's what this means. You you said you were all that's left of me. That means if you don't know, I, I don't know. Oh, pretty good logic for a dementia patient. But that's what it means, right? Oh, maybe. Or maybe you were just protecting yourself. Protecting myself? No statute of limitations on murder. I, I didn't kill her. You sure about that? You two fought plenty. She'd get lonely with you on the road. You'd get jealous thinking she had a fell on the side. Shut up! You fought plenty when you were younger. You were one of those couples always fighting. And then you'd make it up to each other in the sack. That made it all worth it. Just shut up! Of course, as you got older, the sack didn't make up for as much. And the fights got worse. That's what you're afraid of, isn't it? That at some point, you lost your temper with her. 
You can see it, can't you? Your wife, who the whole town knows you fight with, playing lifeless in your arms. Trial would last about five minutes. No. But not if you had help. Not if you had someone to lean on, to help you out. What that bomb say that? Panzer guy helped you wall her up in the cellar. He's a liar. Why do you spend so much time in the cellar, Harold? It's, uh, it's comfortable. Oh, no, it isn't. You've got foundation trouble in that corner. It leaks through the old coal chute. There's always water on the floor. You used to hate it down here. The shop, the one that burned. That's where you want to be. Why do you spend so much time down here now? I didn't kill her. Mm -hmm, maybe not. Problem is, you really don't remember what happened to her, do you? Uh, I, I... Spit it out, Harold. I... I remember... Blood. <sighs> Say, uh... Hun? Breakfast will be ready in a bit, Dad. Good, good. Hey, I... I wondered if I could talk to you about something. Uh, can I wait? I have to be out of here in ten minutes and... Well, I suppose so. I was hoping we could, we could talk, kind of important. Is it... Dad, are you finally ready to talk about Lakeshore? What? Well, that is... Um... Uh, it, it's okay. I, I understand. What did you want to talk about? Well, I... Uh, I, I guess it has to kind of do with that. Oh? I'm feeling uh, like I kind of need some... Syrup? Um, what? With the pancakes. Do you want syrup uh, or jam? Oh, uh, syrup, syrup's fine. Just the carol. All right. Anyways, I, I was... Uh, I was trying to remember something. Oh? Uh, funniest thing. I was trying uh, to remember how Mum died. Oh, what? <laughs> Craziest thing. Uh, well, it, it slipped my mind. I, I, I can't... Uh, I can't remember. Dad, are you all right? Uh, sure. Sure, Every, everything's fine. I just... I can't remember this one little thing. Little? Oh, you know what I mean. It's it's silly, I know. Silly? Penny. Oh. No, no, please. I can't. I just can't. I, I'm sorry, honey. I, I, I don't mean nothing by it. No, this is the end, Dad, okay? This is my end. When you can't remember something like that... I just can't take it. I, 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 I don't follow. You, this, your mental state. You forget something like this, something so important. I gotta ask, what's next? I mean, do you forget how to cross the street? Do you leave the kettle on till it boils dry and catches the kitchen on fire? Oh, 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 no, wait, wait a minute. No, Dad, I won't wait. I'm calling Lakeshore tomorrow and getting you on that list. This is not an if anymore. It's a when. You're going into memory care where people can look after you. I've done a pretty good job of looking after myself. Until now when you forgot about your wife's murder. Oh, what, what, what did you say? You heard me. You told me that was the worst day of your life. And now it's just gone? I love you and I'm sorry, but I won't wait for some horrible accident before we do this. It's Lakeshore. Uh, all right, all right. She disappeared. They found her nightgown and a knife, both stained with her blood, down by the river. They never found her body, but it was enough to get her declared legally dead. The knife had no fingerprints, not even hers. Do you remember? I, uh, I, I do. I, I can't believe I forgot that. I'm, I'm so sorry. I knew it. Shut up. No, I really knew it. Oh, sure you did. If you knew, you should have said something. Oh, you would have just denied it. It don't matter. It's true. What is? What the bum said. What's his name? Uh, Jesse. My myrtle's down in the cellar. Oh, maybe. Maybe not. Oh, can't be anything else. How could I have forgot? Doesn't, doesn't seem, seem like you, does it? I don't remember anything. I, I mean, shouldn't finding out like that 
trigger some memories? When Penny told me like she did, shouldn't it all come back? That's how it works in the movies. I don't remember a thing. I don't remember doing it, or the killing, or the burying, or any of it. It'll make no sense. No, it doesn't. This is bad. Oh yeah? This is real bad. I gotta... I gotta get on top of things. Oh, a little late for that, isn't it? No, no it isn't. I gotta get on top of things before they get worse. There. Oh, yeah? Uh, the brick part, yes. You got a brick foundation? Oh, no, no. It's the old coal chute. Brick coffin built into the concrete pour. <laughs> coffin, huh? Hey, don't say it. Seems appropriate. Well, uh, you showed it to me. Now what? I need your help with something. And why would I do that? Because uh, I'll give you my government check if you do it. What? My... My social security. Uh, I'll give it to you. What the hell do I care about social security? I can set it up where you get the check every month. Steady income. Every month. Why? I'm going into the home next week. Yeah, don't those cost money? I got enough in my other pension. Uh, savings, all that stuff. Uh, I don't need the social security. I got, e got enough. Uh, I won't be in there very long anyway. So you're just handing over the Social Security to me? Right. For no reason. Oh, no, there, there's a reason. I need your help doing something. What's that? We gotta move the body. With what? When I go into the home, my daughter and her husband get the house. I don't want them finding her. How the hell would they find her? She's walled up. Uh, this old coal chute leaks. Sooner or later, they're going to have to repair it. They'd find her. Huh. Monthly check, huh? Monthly check, and in return, you have to help me with this and then leave my family alone. Sure, old man. Sure. Got the pickaxe already, I see. Hope you don't mind doing the heavy work. What? You got a problem with work? No. Of course not. Uh, my ticker wouldn't take it. You open up a hole in the bricks, we'll move her out, and then... Uh, I'll take care of the hole after. What are you going to do with the body? Well, you leave that to me. <sighs> Whatever you say. So, you got bricks already? They're, they're over here. Got it all planned out, huh? Yeah, uh, all, all planned out. Ow, these bricks, they're coming right apart. Where are they? Yeah, water must have gotten to the mortar. Oh. Hey, I thought you said you weren't going to help with this part. What? what? You got a shovel. I, I thought you said I was going to do this part. Oh, shovel was over there with the bricks. Yeah, but I was supposed to do this part. Uh, all right, uh, all right. I, I won't interfere. Damn right. Ah, probably too old to work. Oh, that thing, anyway. You're probably right. Uh, I'll just do a little side work. Ah, what's hey, that? Hit that spot right there. Way over there? Yeah, that's it. Hey, pretty good holes opened up. Yeah. Jesse. Hmm? I'm... I'm sorry. What? Oh. Mm. Kid was right. You are too old to swing that axe. Oh, shut up. 
I gotta do this in four hours before the kids get home. You just gonna, gonna stuff them in there? What choice do I have? Oh, could always cut them into pieces first. You go to hell. Besides, do you want him there with her? Choice have I got? Did you see his eyes? Oh, of course. Chunky. Strung out. After I go into the home, he would have come back to bother Penny. And he just told her about Myrtle. I don't want to think about that. You know what what you could do? What you could do right now? What? You could look. You knocked a pretty good hole in the bricks there. You could look in and see. See what? If she's really there. If it really happened. You mean after after all this it might not have happened? Oh, how would I know? But you could find out. You could look in. Shine a flashlight, maybe. It'd just be old bones by now, anyway. You could look in and know for sure. Oh, I do know for sure. Yes. But what do you know? What do you know, Harold? Nothing. What did you see? Hmm? What did you see in the hole? Was Myrtle's body in there, in the hole? You did wall up the man called Jesse, correct? Uh, Yes. Into the cavity behind the bricks. You walled him up with bricks and mortar. Uh, Yes. You were always very good at that kind of work. Good with my hands. But did you look? Did you look before you stuffed him in the hole? No. Couldn't. Why not? I just couldn't. Won't it be unpleasant, not knowing? Oh, I suppose. But it's better this way. Better that the the project ends this way. Why? Penny. She can't know. She can put me in a home. Uh, I belong there, but she and her husband, they, they can have a good long life in that house. Two of them couldn't afford anything else. You think she could live there if she knew what was in the basement? No, I imagine not. Wait, what happens now to me? We need to study your reaction to something. What's this? We need to see something. We need to ascertain the situation. The video screen is just a tool, it can't hurt you. What the hell is this? An image. Closed circuit, I believe it's called? That's that's my basement. Yes. That's my son-in-law, Harris. Correct. What's he, what's he doing? The coal chute is leaking. But he doesn't know where the leak is originating from, so he needs to open up the brick coffin to find it. He needs to take a pickaxe to the bricks and open a hole. He's very strong. He'll make short work of this. How does that make you feel, Harold? I I don't want to watch. No? I, I don't want to watch. I don't want to remember. But how does it make you feel? The voice. The voice in your head. The voice in your head. Does it return? Does it return as you're watching this? No. Fascinating. Why do you think this is, Harold? Why do you think the voice is gone? Uh, I don't know. Let's watch. Let's watch your son-in-law work. Whatever you say. You'll tell me if the voice comes back? Yes. It is important. It is important for us to ascertain the situation. We are close. Very, very close. You have been listening to Myrtle's Song, part of the Icebox radio theater series Frozen Frights, Aurora Borealis. The cast, in order of appearance, featured Tom Bement as Harold, 
Caleb Silvers, as the interviewer. Ayla McIntosh was Penny, Cheryl Rogers as Myrtle, and Declan Lothian played Jess. Script, direction, and sound design by Jeffrey Adams. Some sound effects from The Free Sound Project, available at freesound.org. Antichamber by the wonderful Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. This program copyright 2020 by the Icebox Radio Theater, which is solely responsible for its content. Learn more at iceboxradio.org. In the far reaches of the north, upon a canvas of cold, star-filled sky, a symphony of color and cosmic radiation plays through the winter night. It is beautiful and terrifying, silent and cacophonous, colorful and Bible black. It is the Northern Lights, mankind's oldest unsolved mystery. If you listen to them very, very carefully, you can hear the millions of voices trapped within. This is Frozen Frights. Aurora Borealis. Here I am. I can't even think with that on. What are we even doing? Three chapters by the weekend. And it's the perfect music to study to. It occupies the right parts of my brain. You have atrocious taste. You've noted, yes. Also, you love it. What? Jolene, you've been my roommate for, what, five semesters? And you've never once asked me to put in headphones. I didn't want to be rude. Uh Uh-huh. I didn't. No, I get it. What you want to do is complain. It's like your hobby. I'm an engineering major. We don't get to have hobbies. Well, your therapy then. That's that's closer. Let it go to voicemail. No, it's Minnesota. Hello? Pam? Grandpa, what number are you calling from? Pamcakes. It's happening. We got big trouble. Who is it? Grandpa, calm down. No, no, you don't understand. It's worse than I thought. Where are you right now? Uh, a little store, just outside Gemmel. Oh, God love them, their payphone works. Pam? Grandpa, you need to calm down. Where's Dad? What? I I don't know. Home, I suppose. Pam, listen to me. You still have that book I gave you, right? You mean, the one? That's right, sweetie. The three-ring binder. You brought it to school, right? Didn't leave it at home? No, it's here. 646. What? The combination lock is 646. I need you to read it now. I can't... You have to take care of this. Grandpa, I, I don't I know, think... I know, you're, you're right in the middle of the term. I'll make it up to you, I, I promise. No, it's not that, it's, it's just... Well, are you sure? As the tomb, sweetie. It's all happening, just like my dad said it would. Okay. Are you going to be there? God willing, yes, but... Wait. What is it? car on the road. I think it's the same car I saw in Eveleth when I stopped for gas. What? Listen to me, Pam. Don't wait for me. Just go. Follow the instructions. But be safe. Grandpa? That car is stopping right in front of this phone. Go, honey. Don't worry about me. Grandpa. Go! Grandpa! Grandpa? So that was Grandpa, huh? Pam, jeez, you look like you've seen a ghost. Pam, what's going on? What's that? Graduation present. What? It was a joke. My grandfather gave me this before I came to school. He called it a graduation present. He didn't smile when he said it, though. You're starting to scare me. Joe, you have to cover for me. Cover how? I'm going to take off for a couple of days. Would you talk to Wilson about my 302? Tell him it was a family emergency. 
What's wrong? That's not even a lie. It is a family emergency. Where are you going? Minnesota. What? Minnesota. I, I have to go to Minnesota. Is your grandfather sick? No. Then what is going on? What the hell is that thing? Instructions. For what? I don't know. He told me not to open it until it was time. That's what the combination lock was for. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, pretty sure Grandpa built it himself. He was always very handy. Oh, uh, it dropped something. What? This envelope fell out. Whoa. What? There's cash in here. Lots of cash. Yeah, that would be for the trip. What trip? Joe, you have to promise me something. Okay. You have to promise me that you won't tell anyone about this. And that you'll cover for me in class. Tell me what's going on. It'd be better if you didn't know. Then I'm going with you. What? No, no, no. Do your grandfather's instructions say anything about going alone on your secret mission? Well, I don't think so, but- Then that settles it. We're going to Minnesota together. Joe. Look into these eyes. Do I look like I'm going to argue with you? I guess it would be safer to share the driving. That's the little justifier I know and love. So? Tell me about Gramps. What's his deal? It's, a, uh, It's kind of nutty. I figured that much out by myself. He was the weirdo in the family. You mean, like, yelling about conspiracies at Thanksgiving? No, that was Uncle Bob. Grandpa was obsessed with this project his dad had done back in the 40s. My great-grandfather was a research scientist, a pretty good one, too. He was working on a major project in northern Minnesota when something went wrong. What happened? Grandpa never told me. But the project was abandoned. Everything was just left there in the woods, some kind of underground bunker. And my great-grandfather took it upon himself to watch over it, make sure no one found it, and come up with a plan for if someone did. But how did you get involved? Don't talk with your mouth full. I'm starved! We've been driving for six hours. Now spill. Well, Grandpa kind of took it upon himself to watch over things when his dad died. And I guess he decided it was our family's duty to look after the experiment, make sure no one found it, and take action if someone did. And he passed the torch on to you? Sort of. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I do. What? Pam, I've met your brother. And I've met your mom. They're super nice but entrusting them to oversee a top-secret science experiment doesn't make sense. Your brother would probably blow it up, and your mom would try and sell it for bingo money. Hey, she's down to once a week. No judgment, no judgment. Just saying that if your grandfather pegged you as the next generation of brains in the family, I get it. Now what's the plan? <sighs> I can hardly keep my eyes open, so make it quick. You sleep. You did all the driving today. But I want to know. I need to study this, Joe. There's a lot here. Mm, by the way, what was this experiment all about? Promise you won't laugh? Of course. It was... temporal displacement. Okay. Night, Pam. Night, Joe. You mean time travel? Leave us. We've been looking for you, Virgil. Long time we've been looking for you. You are vital to our ability to ascertain the situation. It was not easy. In fact, I'd say this was the most difficult interview to facilitate in the entire project. Do you know why? Virgil, do you know why? Because nobody else knows about you. Correct. Nobody else knows about us. Nobody else has an accurate reckoning of the situation. Why exactly do you? Rhetorical. Hmm? My question is rhetorical? That's what I said. You know the answer already. I'm familiar with the meaning of the word rhetorical. And it's true, we do know who you are. You are Virgil McGillicott. Your father was Paul McGillicott. Your father was very significant to us. 
He was a great man. He was a significant man. But yes, a great scientist. Why didn't you follow in his footsteps? My father didn't want me to. Practically forbade it. I, I got an accounting degree. <laughs> that was for him. He didn't know about the second degree I earned in physics until my graduation. And it was too late. He raised holy hell. Why? Why was my father mad that I kept physics degree from him? Why was he against you becoming a scientist, like him? He would have said because it was too dangerous. That you never completely knew the consequences of any experiment until it was too late. You never found it strange that a man who worked in research his whole life would think that way? I found it endlessly fascinating that a man who worked in research his whole life would think that way. My dad was a puzzle. Huh. Did you ever solve him? Yes. How? I figured out just how disastrous his last experiment was. It all made sense after that. I want you to hear something. Uh, an audio recording. Oh, man, it's all right. Oh, oh now what? On a lighter. Where did you get this? With your internet, acquiring audio recordings is not difficult. But those were never put online. And yet here they are. A record of your father's final experiment. Wait, wait, wait. I want you to focus on this point. Hey, Paul, look. Where did that come from? What? There on the stage where the lighter was. Where'd that come from? In the middle of winter. What is it? It's a caterpillar, Paul. A brown and black caterpillar. Thank you. For what? The look on your face just verified the authenticity of this recording. We hadn't been 100% sure before now. Oh, fine. That was my father's last experiment. He was attempting to achieve temporal displacement? Yes. He was attempting to move an object, his uh, uh, cigarette lighter, just a few moments forward in time. Yes. And it worked? No. The lighter disappeared for ten seconds and then reappeared. What is it you want, exactly? To ascertain the situation. To understand. I don't believe you. Why? Well, for one thing, I was roughed up, drugged and brought here against my will. Not a standard research technique in most sciences. Not in most sciences, no, but the information you can provide us with will be vital for our understanding of the situation. I don't know anything. You know everything. You're mistaken. I don't think we are. Seventy-two years ago, your father showed us our future. My people were without hope, trapped in a reality that was slowly killing us. Then we learned of another world, a world where we could thrive. There was just one problem. It was too hot for you. You see? You do understand. Your father must have told you everything. He told me nothing. He didn't want anyone going near that experiment ever again. But, like a good scientist, <laughs> he could not destroy his research, could he? He could not bring himself to burn his notes. No. He knew the notes would be necessary if we ever needed to stop you. Stop us from what? From coming here. You are the creatures in the Northern Lights. Dad's experiment only worked when the Northern Lights were shining. He never did figure out why. But when that cigarette lighter came back, it was freezing cold. And it wasn't alone. He called her Isabella, didn't he? No. His partner, Norman, did. A little caterpillar. He mistook her for the larval stage of the tiger moth. A caterpillar came back with the lighter, proving that it hadn't traveled through time. It had simply gone to another place, another dimension directly adjacent to ours maybe even overlapping with ours. It's an unbelievably cold dimension, populated by bugs. Your dimension. Do I look like a caterpillar to you? I don't know why you look the way you do. I don't know if this is some kind of illusion, magic trick, or what. You may even be human, and you work for them now. All I know is that I've been watching and waiting for decades for you to make your appearance, and it's finally happened. And I'm ready. <laughs> ready? You were drugged and brought here against your will, remember? Doesn't matter. Oh, that's right. You have a contingency plan. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about this other file here. The file we've kept on your granddaughter. Are you 
you sure that this is the... Quiet! Keep your voice down. Sorry. Dang it! What's wrong? It's supposed to be around here. Is the GPS in your phone any good? Yes? No? I don't know. I think those things are only good for about 10 square meters. How do you know that? My grandpa's big into geocaching. He has extensive opinions about which GPSs are best and which are garbage. <laughs> so you have a crazy grandpa too, huh? He's not crazy. He's just retired and bored. I'd rather hear him drone on about GPSs than my other grandpa yell about Trump's wall. For or against? Don't know. He keeps flip-flopping. He was pretty firmly in favor until he started dating this new girlfriend, a younger woman. Wow. Go, Grandpa. Don't be too impressed. She's 60. Still, dude must have game. Please do not use that phrase in reference to my elderly relatives. <laughs> All right. Honestly, I'm kind of jealous. What for? My grandpa was not a lot of fun. I gathered. So why exactly are we here? Um, I, I'd rather not tell you. How about a little trust? I did come with you all the way to Minnesota. I know, and thank you. It's just... I... I feel like I need to protect you from this. Okay, there could be some pretty serious fallout from what I'm going to do if I ever find this stupid lab. And what is it you're going to do? Is what you would ask if you had just ignored what I said. Just tell me what you're going to do. Come on, you owe me. How? Who drove the whole way so you could study that binder? I'm not sure that's relevant. Tough. I'm making it relevant. Tell me what we're here to do. <sighs> okay. There's another reason I'm not telling you. Which is? It's bat poop insane. You're adorable when you try to cuss. Jolene. And it can't be that insane. Can it? Yes. 9-11 was an inside job insane? <laughs> no. Illuminati conspiracy? No. Reptilians robbing us of our vital fluids? <laughs> no. Aliens? Pam. Make a joke, Pam. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't think I can. What? It's not exactly aliens. How can something be not exactly aliens? It's either aliens or it's not. It's not outer space aliens. Ugh, you dragged me all the way to Minnesota. Dragged you? To find E.T.? You insisted. I'm missing class for this. You insisted. I have a midterm in four days. And you insisted. Jolene, why did you come anyway? I didn't ask. I discouraged you. I practically begged you not to come. You insisted vigorously. I was worried. Bull flop. Seriously, don't try and cuss. It's very distracting. Why did you come? I was worried, all right? I didn't want you to go away and maybe disappear forever before... Before what? Before I told you how I felt. About... about you. What? I may have a small platonic crush on you. Platonic? All right, uh, let's call it semi-platonic. But I'm straight. And I'm not. And I also have serious intimacy issues and close to zero experience in matters of the heart, so I think it's pretty understandable that I should develop an attachment to my college roommate, who's the closest friend I've ever had, and it's also pretty amazing. My grandpa believes aliens who live in the Northern Lights are trying to take over our dimension. And he sent me here to blow up the portal my great-grandfather created by accident in 1948. Oh. This seemed like the time for full disclosure. Right. Uh. Now what? Well, would it be weird if I went into the bathroom to change from now on? No, I mean about this. Right, well, um... The first thing we need to do is find the stupid lab, and I don't think the GPS in my phone is any good. It's fine. What do you mean? I'm pretty sure I've been standing on a trap door for five minutes. Yep. Trap door. When were you going to mention this? Hey! I've been trying to build up the courage to say what I just said for two years, and I figured the damn door wasn't gonna move. Fair enough. Joe? 
Yeah? I don't want you hurt. I think you should go home. No. I can help. And I wouldn't be able to concentrate on studying anyway. Right. Joe? Yeah? Thank you. Yeah. Trapdoor's padlocked. Yeah, there was a key in the binder. There may be another way you know. No. You're sure? Very. We have been studying you for 70 years. We have noted that you make the same choices over and over, despite the benefits of other options. We have changed. We've grown. (laughs) On accident, maybe. But by choice, too. No. Or at least not enough for us to consider that option. You would not accept us. We are foreign. We are strange. Our physical requirements are different than yours. But... We might be able to help. Unlikely. And to request your help, we would have to reveal ourselves to you. Then you would destroy us because we are so very different. You don't know that. Do you admit it's a possibility? We don't kill indiscriminately. You kill indiscriminately in one circumstance, and that is the other. The stranger, the foreign one, the one you do not understand. In that circumstance, you slaughter wholesale. Men, women, children, it does not matter. For in the case of something that is different, victory is not enough. You must wipe it out of existence. If it is different than you, it must not be. We're not animals. That's exactly what you are. Then it was an animal that found a way to reach you in your dimension. On accident. Face it, you cannot view your species as an outsider views it. If you did, you'd kill yourselves. This is the pattern that we've seen over and over. For your species, clarity leads to self-destruction. Only delusion allows for survival. What delusion? You're the one that's deluded. We're talking now, discussing the situation like rational beings. Yet you act like I'm going to kill you. Maybe you wouldn't kill me, but one of your kind would. Just because you're different. Just because we're different. We're not that tribal. Look at all we've accomplished. Arguably more than you have. Arguably. But you are tribal. Extremely tribal. And it's your ability to delude yourselves that allowed your species to progress to this point. I don't understand. <sighs> Amazing. You you really can't see it, can you? What the hell are you talking about? Your species has risen from living in caves in tiny family groups only because of delusion. All the instincts of your ancestors are still there, still bubbling away in that primate cranium of yours. You tell yourselves you've evolved beyond primitive emotion, but the truth is you've only circumvented it. Instead of driving the other tribe from your hunting ground with clubs, you root for some football team that they root against. Instead of killing an infant that's obviously the offspring of a forbidden union, you talk of lost property values and cultural purity so that your neighborhood can be free of the outsider. You haven't evolved at all. You've just found excuses for the animal within, tossing him a bone so he'll stay out of your way as you imitate higher life forms. And if you were to see us as we really are, You would fight to the last to see us wiped off the face of the planet. There would be justifications, of course, but they only come after. After that cocktail of hormones and adrenaline inside your brains has already decided our fate. Judge and jury in the blink of an eye. If we're so dangerous, I would think you wouldn't want to attack us so readily. Oh, there's nothing hasty about our plan. We've waited for an opportunity, and while we waited, we observed, refined, made it perfect. It won't be enough another of your traits. Hubris. What are you talking about? You assume your scientists tell you all there is to know, and that no outsider is capable of knowing something more. You probably don't even know about Seed 1467. What's that? A meteor, headed straight for Earth. Your scientists know about it, of course, but their ability to see and track such space objects is inferior to ours. And because they don't wish to be wrong, they haven't told many people what Seed 1467 is. And what is it? The doom of your entire existence. Your scientists think it might hit Earth. We know it will. We are better at such things than they are. When it hits, it will begin the process leading to another ice age. And then we will take over. Assuming this is true, do you really think we'll just roll over and die? No, no, you'll fight back. But your defenses will be fractured. Your leaders will argue about what to do and posture with each other until it's too late. You must understand, 
This meteor event is perfect for us, not because it will be overwhelmingly destructive, but because where it comes in your history. For most of the past two centuries, you have been growing closer together as a species, finding ways to move towards unity. But in the last two decades, you've lost it all. You are, once again, cave dwellers with clubs. Except when you come. When you come, we will have a common enemy. We have been studying you on a much more individual level. We have interviewed thousands of you, especially those on the fringes of your society. We have tried to understand how you can be so advanced and so primitive at the same time, and we have come to a fascinating conclusion. What's that? All of you feel like outsiders, every last one. Your sense of community, of unity, has been destroyed. You're like a crystal made up of nothing but cracks. One tiny blow in the right spot, and your society would explode into a million pieces, every shard for himself. You think we're just going to fall apart and you'll waltz in? We know it'll happen that way. We know because we're going to tell your scientists about the meteor at exactly the right moment. Not too close to the day of impact, not too far away. Just enough time to panic, but not enough time to overcome that panic. It won't work. Of course it will. We weren't sure it would until your most recent global crisis. That pandemic? That showed us vividly how our plan will come together. Your scientists will announce the meteor's impending impact, and immediately other scientists will question their findings. Arguments will ensue, people with no real expertise will sound like experts, and because of that, gather acolytes online. Celebrities will chime in. Politicians will measure their statements not by what's true, but by how their base will react. No one will be able to prepare for the impact because they'll be too busy trying to win an argument over whether or not it will happen. And when it does hit, when the inertia present in your ever-heating world sends you plummeting into a new Arctic reality, all anyone will know to do is argue about whether it's as bad as it seems. Millions will die along your equator, but that's okay. You didn't really care about all those brown people anyway. All that will be left of the human race is sad little white people who are already well-trained to live in tiny boxes. We'll make sure the electricity stays on, and that you will still have an internet to register your complaints upon, and that the pornography stream will continue so that the urge to reproduce will be sated without producing any offspring, and in a generation or two, the planet will well and truly be ours. No. That's your response? That's all you have? Just... No. I see. Ah, one of my favorite inventions of yours, the portable phone. We'll have to see if it can be adapted for our bodies. Yes? Good. Good news, Virgil. We found your granddaughter. She led us right to where we want to be. Yeah. Creepy. No, just dark. Fuse box over here. The mains are shut off. Do I just... Can't hurt. Can it? Well, that sounds a little ominous. If they're drawing off the power grid, that means underground lines that are, like, 70 years old. We're lucky to get anything. There's a light switch here. Okay. The platform in the center of the room, that's it. That's what? The, uh, hang on. The hypercucambulator. The what? The time machine, basically. Or what they thought was a time machine. We have to get this stuff powered up. Here. You take these instructions from Grandpa's binder and get all the equipment powered up. If something doesn't work right away, give it a good whack. If it still doesn't power up, move on to the next thing on the list. We'll deal with it later. Wait, wait a minute. Isn't that a little dangerous? Well, yeah. There's a fire extinguisher in that corner. And I'm sure that's in perfect working order, being from 1948 and all. Well, what do you want me to say? It's just a little dangerous. Do you want to switch jobs? What were you going to do? Go up top and unbury the explosives Grandpa hid in the woods. Oh. 
I would like to remind you at this juncture which one of us insisted on coming and which one of us begged her to stay home. I know, I know, it's just... What exactly is our plan? Well, Grandpa thinks the best way to stop them is to send a bomb through to the other dimension. What? We're going to get this equipment fired up, assemble a bomb, then send it into the other dimension, thus neutralizing the threat. Or maybe pissing them off. I'm just going by Grandpa's instructions. Well, do the instructions include anything about what this will do? Uh, no. Uh, not really. Pam. Joe, you wanted to come. I know, I know. But I don't think we should do this without thinking about it first. Why exactly are we killing a bunch of aliens? I don't think we're killing them. I think we're closing a doorway they're going to come through. A doorway? Yeah. That machine over there. You mean that's been sitting quietly in the dark for 70 years? That machine? I don't know, okay? It's just what Grandpa said to do. Pam, I'm just saying that maybe we should- I know. Blowing something up before you understand it is kind of an old white guy move. I know, I know, it's just- Look, on the phone when he called, it sounded like he was in real trouble. Like something was after him. Look, I love you, as a friend, as a friend, but how do we know for sure that we're not going to do something horrible here? I mean, I get it, he's your grandpa and you love him and everything, but how do we know for sure? He's not crazy? Yeah. We don't. Which is why, again, I didn't want you to come. Well, I'm here now, so just deal with it. I'm gonna ask why, Pam. You know I am. Look. How about this? How about we get all the stuff together and then talk about it? Try to figure it out. You're saying it's possible I can talk you out of the throwing bombs around? I don't... I'm not... <sighs> I'm gonna take that as a yes. Fine. But I'm going to get the bomb. I'll come with. Digging is easier with two, and I'm not gonna power this stuff up until we've made a decision. Right. Fair enough. You know there's one thing. What's that? I can't believe that... What was that? There's another car here. Pam? Who are those guys? What's wrong with them? They don't look right. What? Close the door. What are you talking about? Excuse us, young ladies. We would like to talk to you. We were just locking up. This is a government facility. You are not allowed inside. Right. Who who gave you the order to come out here? Was it... It was President Clinton. Hillary Clinton? Yes. Lock the door. Lock the door now. Stop what you are doing. It's okay. We have permission to be here, or I'm not Ruth Bader Ginsburg. What the hell? Did they look right to you? No. They looked positively... alien. Yes? Yes. I understand, yes. Well, your offspring's offspring is being particularly difficult. She always was a pistol. Just ask her mother. She's locked herself in your father's old lab. We're not sure why. I don't suppose you'd care to make it easy on her. You touch one hair on that child's head and I'll kill you. You're not exactly improving my view of your species. Maybe I'm having a hard time accepting you as an expert on humanity. Of course you'd feel that way. We are the experts. You see, those of your kind who study your kind, anthropologists, psychologists, and that like, they, they have one fatal flaw. They always seek the medium, the average. They look for the norm where none really exists. We didn't focus on that. We focused on the outsider, the one who felt lost, separate. You said we all felt like outsiders. You do, but some of you actually are. It's amazing what separation from the group will do to one of your species. That couldn't have told you anything. We're individuals. There are too many variables in play. No one could possibly understand you but yourselves, hmm? You only think that because you've never talked to people on the fringe. I'm on the fringe. Ah, oh, all of your kind think that way. We've established that. You'd be fascinated by who we've talked to. A young woman, desperate for excitement. So much so she imagines a serial killer living next door. An arrogant nihilist who fancies himself a serial killer, blinded by the danger right in front of him. An old man whose diseased mind could not forget his greatest sin. Even a couple so wrapped up in youth, they imagined themselves mythical immortals. Oh, and the most valuable of all, a man so adept at deluding himself 
objective reality no longer existed for him. You see, Virgil, we know all there is to know about you. Then why exactly am I here? You make it sound like your plan is foolproof. Not exactly foolproof. There is that uh, little matter of how our physical bodies will travel to your dimension. You don't seem to have much trouble now. Do you think we're in your dimension? Do you think we're in a room in some city on Earth? Do you think I'm just a man? <laughs> Disturbing, isn't it? What? Oh, what was that? Little taste of reality. Your body is in stasis, in a chamber keeping you alive in our dimension. You would freeze to death in a matter of minutes without it. You and I are speaking through a mental interface. None of this is real? We are two minds communicating, that's real. How did I get here? Oh, a similar device to your father's. Ours, unfortunately, has some design flaws we've yet to work out. Ours is a one-way trip, sorry to say for you. So, I die here? Not necessarily. Your father's device had no such limitation. Problem is, we can't operate it from this side. We need someone there, in the lab in Minnesota. I won't help you! We don't need you to help us. We have your granddaughter. You think they're just gonna keep knocking? Probably. Don't feel bad. About what? About me being here. I wanted to be here. We're going to get out of this. Even if we don't. I'm glad I came. Why? Because I finally got up the guts to tell you how I felt. Well, now I feel terrible. Don't. I mean, you're great and everything, but I don't, I just, I'm not, I don't... Feel that way about me? I'm sorry. Again, don't be. Something occurred to me today. Maybe I was only crushing on you because that way I could avoid a real relationship. That would not be a bad outcome for all this. Learning that about yourself, it'd make me feel better. Definitely better for you. Why do you say that? Because, seriously, dude, I am a high-maintenance girlfriend. Oh, I know. I live with you. <laughs> what the hell's that? There's an old radio over there. Hello, Pam. What? Did it just say? I I'm not, I... You're not going insane. We have just co-opted the tubes in this old radio so that we might speak with you. Do not be alarmed. I cannot reach you. You are quite safe. Feel free to speak. I can hear you. How do I know we're safe? Pam! You'll notice the men knocking on the door have stopped. This was by my order. He's right. They've stopped. Yeah. Who are you? That's none of your concern at the moment. Do you know where my grandfather is? He's with us. He's been with us over 24 hours. Prove it. Pam, don't listen to anything he says. Get out of there. Do not execute page 206. Don't... As you can see, he's in very good health. Sprightly, one might say. What are you doing to him? Talking to him. Nothing more. Don't hurt him. I have no intention of hurting him, Pam. I have every intention of returning him to you and your family. Eventually. What do you mean, eventually? Well... To get your grandfather to cooperate with us, we had to share certain details of our plan. These are details no one else can know about. At least not yet. Let... Let me talk to him again. Why? I have to make sure he's okay. How do I know you didn't just record him? You have 20 seconds. And if I feel you're doing anything underhanded, I will kill him while you listen. He has a breathing tube inserted. With a flick of a switch, I can liquefy his organs while you listen to him suffer for a while, and then breathe his last. Do you understand? Yes. Very well. Pam? I'm here, Grandpa. Oh, I'm so sorry, honey. Don't be. I, I just... I'm sorry. I, I never got around to reading the book you gave me for a graduation present. Oh? oh well, maybe when classes are on break. 
They're very lovely poems. Which one was your favorite? Oh, uh, I, I love all of them. But the one in the appendix, the one originally published by Adams, 12th Folio? I don't know that one. It's sad, but there's a lot of truth to it. Grandpa? Yes? I... Could you two be any more obvious with your code? What are you talking about? Explain to me. Explain to me what all that nonsense was about, and I might kill him quickly. All right, all right. I'll explain. Just don't hurt him. No promises. Now tell me what this was all about before my temper gets the better of me. You have to understand, little girl, that this is all... Finally! You've been fiddling with that thing for five minutes! Hey, I'm a structural engineer, not an electrical one. Besides, they don't teach us about radio tubes anymore. Did you break it? I don't know. They managed to power this thing remotely, so I wouldn't put it past them to reconnect it somehow. Do you and your grandpa have a plan? I think so. Yeah, yeah, here. He was trying to tell me something. What was that about poems? Code. The book he gave me for graduation was this binder. There are no poems, but there are several appendixes. Did he say by Adams? I don't know. I was busy breaking the radio. It was Adams. That probably means Appendix A. Oh, damn it. What is it? Appendix A is a list of fallbacks in case the main plan didn't work. And the main plan was the bomb? Right, which is still outside with us trapped inside. There's like 20 of these. Yeah. He said the 12th folio, 12th fallback on this list. It says, blow up the lab. Okay, how? Well, there's step-by-step -step instructions. Which equipment we turn on and in what order to start a chain reaction and blow the whole place sky high. So we set the reaction going, run out the door, and make a break past the scary aliens? Yes. No. What do you mean, no? Uh, I mean, no, we're not going to do that, Joe. We're going to do number seven instead. Why? Trust me, we can do this. That was stupid. Or very clever. No, it was stupid. Breaking communication with us ends any chance they might have had of getting you back. And they're going to want you back. Family groups always look out for their own. It's just possible that you don't actually know what you're talking about. Have you thought of that? No. I'll communicate with your granddaughter and make her see reason. I'll, I'll call our men outside their door. What is that? Damn hurt. I don't have time to play with you anymore, old man. You're on your own. What? Hold on! I'm gonna break the glass! Hold still. They have a breathing tube in Ah! Come on! Who are you? We only have a few seconds to get back to the pad. Let me help you. All right. Ugh, you're slimy. How did you know where to find me? Hey, I'm raising. They wouldn't have moved you far from the pad because you probably would have frozen to death. Uh, here, up here. My god! Is that- Yeah, it's your dad's machine. We just have a few seconds before we're zapped back to the lab. What is that? Them. I just think we need to be out of here before they get here. Uh, it's a few seconds. Well, they're getting closer. Just a few seconds more. Can't you speed it up? It's on a timer. We set the microchronometer for one minute. A whole minute? Uh, they're getting nearly here. I don't... I'm not... Oh! <laughs> Grandpa! Oh, Pam! You're naked. Sorry, Pam. I bring it back how I find them. Ugh. What's wrong? Caterpillars everywhere. Ah! Oh, don't worry. They won't survive long. Too hot for them here. Get them off me. Oh, sweetie, why don't you hand me that pressure suit there? Then help your friend with the bugs. Sure, Grandpa. Uh, hey, this is great Grandpa Paul's. Sure, sure. Ugh, every crevice. Calm down. There's like four on you. It's the principle of the thing. All right. Now that I'm decent again, you can explain why you ignored my instructions. What? Before, on the radio, he forbid me to go to page 206. It's... All about how to stage a rescue in the alien dimension. So why did you disobey me? We, um... Uh, we weren't sure we could set the chain reaction to destroy the lab without you. Uh-huh. Well, are the bad guys still outside? They haven't knocked for a while. Still probably out there. I happen to know that without this device, they can't go back. All right, girls. Here's the plan. We set the reaction, make a run for the door, and fight our way out. Fight with what? Well, whatever's at hand. 
This one here appears to be pretty good with a metal pipe. Oh yeah, did you end up needing that? Hell yeah, they had him in some kind of matrix pod. <sighs> Savages. We don't need to fight for very long. We just need to keep them away from the lab. Well, it... Yeah. We're going to destroy your father's work, aren't we? Yes, but it's something I should have done years ago. I'm so sorry I dragged you into this. It's okay. As long as you're 100% sure it's necessary. I am. 100%. In local news, seasonal crews in Voyager's National Park put out a forest fire yesterday near a remote section of the mainland. In doing so, the crews discovered an 80-year-old research lab apparently set up by the Army just after World War II. Army spokespeople refused to comment on the purpose of the lab other than to say it posed no threat to park visitors or to wildlife. The lab was totally destroyed by the blaze, which is now completely under control. In other news, Donald Tr You sure you don't want me to drive? No. You drove all the way here. I don't want you to get tired. I'm fine. And quit fussing over me. After the last few days, I'm gonna fuss. Get over it. Well, then I guess I'm just gonna have to go with my plan B. I'm so tired of plan A's and plan B's and crazy grandpas and... Wait, what's your plan B? Get you a girlfriend so I can get some space. Uh, what exactly do you mean, get me a girlfriend? Well, when you were asleep last night, I may have figured out your phone code. What? There's a lot of pictures of that one girl. The soccer player? We're just friends. And that's an invasion of privacy! <laughs> yeah, completely. But she did get awfully flirty texting with me last night when she thought I was you. What?! Check it out. The conversation's still there. Oh my god. Oh my god. You're so dead. You're so dead. I just thwarted an alien invasion, sweet cheeks. I'm invincible. This has been The Situation, the season finale of the Icebox Radio Theater series Frozen Frights, Aurora Borealis. The cast in order of appearance featured Rachel Malasig as Joanne, Trelawney Irwin was Pam, Douglas Screef played Virgil, Jeffrey Adams was the interviewer, and Justin Kapla was the alien at the bunker and the news announcer. The recording of the original experiment was taken from the radio play Northern Lights, featured on the series Quiet Please, written by Willis Cooper. Script, direction, and sound design by Jeffrey Adams. Some sound effects from The Freesound Project, available at freesound.org. This program copyright 2020 by the Icebox Radio Theater, which is solely responsible for its content. Learn more at Radio. Dot O-R-G. The Icebox Radio Theater's Frozen Frights, Aurora Borealis, is made possible in part by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the Arrowhead Regional Arts Council thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund.